Are we live? Are we live? Seems good. Let's continue with space exploration. Wherein I didn't actually get time to look at this off stream. Oh well, let's see if, what we can do. So we're trying to say... Aziz Light! Aziz Light, Dodger, Glacier Wolf, Twisty P, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Just reposition this fan here. Hopefully we don't cook. All right. Um, so we've got a function here to get which resources are tied for minimum. Um, the thing is, the lag time for this to update is sort of an entire return journey. And that could pose a problem, even if I do solve the rest of this that I was thinking about doing. What I want to say is, uh, in the set of information that comes through this wire, the type of core fragment that's already detected here has to be present for us to pass it through. But if I do do that, let's say right now we only dispatch ships until we get holmium, uh, holmonite or stone core fragments back. Um, that's going to take like 14, 15 minutes if they're going via Foenestra. Which means we would be sending ships nowhere but to pick up these two resources for like 15 minutes. Um, I think we would need more storage to make that work. Well, here's the thing, we're, we're checking our storage. Or one of our storages. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really sure I can come up with something that would be helpful at this stage. I might just leave it as it is for now, and I'll have a think about it. So what else should we be working on right now? We're about to get advanced roboports. That's nice. Looks like we're just about... We just ran out of some kind of science just before we got them. We're literally... How many does this take? 500. Excuse me. Yeah, it's going to stop at like... Uh, well, what are we about to run out of, though? Advanced tech cards? No. What do we need to research this? Material 3, Energy 3. Uh, we're out of Energy 3. No, we're not. Material 3? Uh, yeah, we are out of Energy 3. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What kind of resource bottlenecks do we have at the moment? Energy 3 is looking for... Actually, the catalogs are saturated. Uh, energy 2, energy 1... Holmium, again. Uh, it's always Holmium these days. Hmm. How could I make it prioritize as opposed to only allow through the highest priority stuff? I don't know if I could with this system. Le Les Ux de Soya? Welcome in. Hope you're doing well. At least it's not 13 anymore, I hope. You mean Spaceship 13? Spaceship 13 is... Uh, where, where is it right now? You're joking. Spaceship 13 is sitting at Foenestra without a destination. 
Gnarf, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for the raid. Welcome, raiders. Um, how did this happen? How was it sent to Foenestra without a destination? Well, I may as well sell, uh, send it to pick up something via Foenestra. How about Wexivis? Is this guy busted as well? Oh, this guy's literally busted. Um, okay, first of all... Wow, that's a lot more planets than we had here last time. Uh, let's send 13 to Spirizo. Spirizo Orbit. And then let's go rescue that ship. Just delete it at this point? No. Deep Tree Cottontail, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Glad 13 is having a nice vacation. It thought it could hide from me there. Alright, um, we're gonna go Foenestra. And once we get to Foenestra, we're setting our destination to Wexivis, I think it was. Or I could just set it directly to Iron Hauler 19. Is this where it appears if it, like, suffered media damage while it was in Foenestra? No, we've had ships stop on the way to Foenestra before. It's probably just a coincidence. Hmm. Uh, it's unfortunate how rarely the ships take damage. Like, literally, we've only had a handful of these ships um, being stopped by asteroids in, like, I don't know, 100 or 200 hours or something. Alright, well, that's something to do straight away. When do we get to Foenestra? Less than five minutes? We might have an ETA before we hit the interstellar map. Not quite, we're not going to hit full speed. Uh, let's call it four minutes. Till we need to change our destination. Now what should I work on in the meantime? Let's check our core fragment throughput. Um, consumption. Vitamelange seems pretty good. Vulcanite's been okay, I think. What could be higher? Why do we have trains? Oh, they're not stuck. Oh, cool, cool. I just happened to see two of them here. They're not stuck at all. Um, but yeah, we've got three quarters of the blocks active, or ha three quarters of the half blocks active at the moment. For Vulcanite Core Fragments, that should be more than enough. For E... I'm a little concerned by this. Our Pyroflux is slowly dwindling. And we had an awful lot of it in storage. It's not really dwindling, dwindling that slowly. I'm going to have some more of it soon, though. Um, but yeah, we should definitely update this. Let's jump into the editor... And that's that's actually bugging me. Lab Lab tile one. Lab tile two. There we go. Okay. Uh what are we doing? Copy paste. Make sure we get rid of any old power poles or Wind turbines. Never did end up putting a beacon uh, in front of this thing. Don't think we need it, to be honest. Good morning, Marcel. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome, Fraser K. Uh, this is probably the place to put a beacon, though. 
and then we want advanced chemical plants. Advanced chemical plant. Um, same recipe. And we'll... Excuse me. Voice is still warming up. Um, we'll ratio this for endgame modules. Maybe I'll even keep that. We'll see what kind of rate we get. This thing. So it's two solids in, one fluid out. And... Actually, would need this to make use of all that room. How did I shape this earlier? Oh yeah, because the chemical plants are much smaller. I don't think we're going to be needing that many. Oh. Uh, I guess I could have less storage here. I probably only had that much to make it fit nicely or something earlier. Evil plant. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so how fast would this pyroflux be? Let's go efficiencies and speeds. Negative 80% power consumption. One more, I think, is too many. Yes. And how fast would this be? 6.4 thousand fluid per second. And 3... Hundred and thirty-six. I don't think we need that much. Uh, three thirty-six over ninety is like four belts, four purple belts of sand. Yeah, I I don't think we need that much. Um, what if we just limit it to uh one purple belt on each side, or maybe two? How's that? So three on each side. Yeah, that's like that's a purple belt of sand and a purple belt of vulcanite blocks. I I seriously doubt we're gonna actually have We do need to merge and split it, I think. Just like this. Yeah, I don't think we're actually going to be pouring that many materials in. Uh, so instead of... Could do it straight down the middle. I'd have to move these out a little bit. Superior inserters. How about I just move these down as well? How far, how much fluid do we get? 1.5k per second. That's a little bit too much for one pipe. Maybe link that up there. Let's have the trains load a bit faster. And then... Hmm. It's not super convenient. This goes in here, and that one just doesn't line up very well. 1,000 between the two of these, that should be fine. And then these ones don't line up so good. Second thought, I could put these back here. I 
actually not really. Oh, well, that's fine. I guess I could put another one of these here. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay. I'll just test everything works here. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Why not plan for wide area beacons too? Uh I think wide twos are so late that I can't even be bothered with it. Wide oh. how did I turn that off? Uh oh. Oh that's the screensaver. Wide area beacon. Uh what does what what does it take to research it? Wide Area Beacon 2. It takes Deep Space Science Pack 2. So, in other words, the absolute highest tier of science. And then we have to go around updating everything after we've basically finished the game. And the Wide Area Beacon Tier 1 is, like, fast enough, honestly. May I put in a song request? Uh, no, I'm not playing music uh, on the channel. I don't want to have to deal with even the unlikely threat of copyright strikes. Also, people can pick their own music if I don't. Typing without glasses? Indeed. Alright, uh, let's do some test input up here. I'm gonna... Set filters blacklist. That might not be enough, actually, because they're taking turns. And there's, like, almost two purple belts of each that we need. That consumes 84 per second each, for each resource. Is it stopping and starting? Oh! Oh, it's too much sand to pick up. But it, it, yeah, it's too much for the superior inserters. Jeez. Okay, well what if... What if we, do, we use some loaders? And how am I going to make that line up well? Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. It's actually one to one. For all of these. I could try doing some, like, clever sushi-like stuff that doesn't loop, but I'm sure it would, uh end up blocking itself one day anyway, even if we did keep this saturated, or if I put circuitry to make sure it doesn't move unless this is got plenty. Um, but yeah, I was thinking maybe we could do something like this. How about two blocks? They don't each need a whole belt of input, but they do each need one loader. Hmm. Between the two of them, they need two purple belts. Each one only needs one. We could do a split belt if there's a, a decent way to, to merge them. I don't know that that is we, we want these two to split into half belt times three
without bottlenecking. I don't know if it can be done. Or if it... More to the point, uh, can it be done and look good? And then we would need to split two into three like that. Yeah, it's going to be kind of a belty mess if I do that. I think it would be tidier if we just have two inputs for each machine. That might be a throughput issue, indeed. So this could just go straight here, but then we don't have room to do all of them direct. Unless... I move this over here. We don't have room for that. Uh, we kind of do. It just might look slightly... off. But yeah, we could, we could do that. But then, these aren't going to line up. If I move it over one tile... But then these don't line up. God damn it. What if this one is here, this one is here... And this one is here. They won't have a perfect, uh, consistent V, but maybe that's fine. then just link these directly. There's no way to do that consistently. Um, what if this goes here? Those two would line up. And if this goes here, only that one would line up. Doesn't really help. This one could find its way down this way, and so could this one, and that's actually kind of consistent, and that goes there, and this goes here. You could live with that. That actually seems reasonable. Oh, and what's our overall throughput? It's, um... Two belts of sand and two belts of vulcanite block, right? So, we could get rid of this. Move this back over. Have a couple of filtered. Oops. Filtered with things to push over this way. So let's see. We can fit uh, 256 stacks in here. Which means if we push all of it here, that's one and a bit train loads. If we go for like 1.5 train loads of each, maybe we should look for more than that. Both of these stack to 200 and have the exact same consumption rate. That's convenient. 
Um, if we ask for like two train loads to try and make sure we keep up. Well, more to the point, how fast do we go through one train load? Um, 119 seconds, that's actually totally fine. Oh, and I just realized... Yeah, I don't think we even need this. Well, I kind of need all the extra belts coming out of it. And I just realized that this would have bottlenecked here if I didn't add two more. Yeah, I kind of only need the... Um... I don't actually need to control inputs to this. Yes, I do. Tap. I need to make absolutely sure that both inputs are in here. Actually, hold on. If we're requesting 1.5 train loads, 150 stacks, that's significantly less than fits in here. Yeah, we don't actually need to filter that at all. Although, I will filter one or the other up here, just to make sure both get pushed into this container. 168 times 2... Yeah, 3.73 belts. That should be fine. I was about to mention that. Got there first. Budgie bum, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Four minutes have passed. Construction ship should be at destination. That's a good point. Thank you. Which ship did we need to rescue? Number 19. We'll be there in about four minutes. And back to the editor. We also need to tell ship 19 at some point to go to construction ship, otherwise we won't be able to dock with it. Okay. Alright, test inputs just to be sure. That's... Oh, right. Yeah, we know that's going to work anyway. Come to think of it... No, that's not going to work. I think I need to allow more than... Just a little bit to be put in each time. Oh yeah, otherwise it's going to be gaps. Oh, that is filling up with vulcanite blocks. Hmm. Okay, different test inputs. Sand and vulcanite. Easy peasy. I mean, I think we already confirmed this part works, actually. Alright. That should be fine. Let's remove the modules, because we don't actually have year nines to burn on everything just yet. Or any, for that matter. Where's our Vulcanite? Uh, not Vulcanite. Pyroflux build. Here we go. Let's start by bringing Decon Train over here. It wouldn't take many prod modules to tier 6 this thing. Except I think I'm carrying them all at the moment. And 
and I want to... that's a lot of sand. But well, actually, this is exactly where this container is going to be, right? No? No, we're going to move it up one. Why is the construction... Uh, why are you like this? Now they're hovering, even though we've got an empty deconstruction train right here. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that's where that container's going to be. Good. Fantastic. And we want to... How much have we got here? 86k times 8. That's more than is going to fit um, in the new build. So I guess I still had a little bit more than I realized. Let's not go destroying it. Actually, let me pump it all over this way for the moment. Okay, so we want to remove in order so that fluid gets pushed back into the pipe network. Doesn't actually link the way I thought it did. Let's go far, so good. Scarcely a drop was wasted. Wait, where was that going? Oh no. Maybe a little bit was wasted on that side. But more to the point, we should now be able to, let's see, I want to get rid of all the big containers on the left except for those three. Uh-oh. Oh, it got pushed over here. So it goes into one adjacent container, specifically, as opposed to two. Interesting. Why can't we place palms? Um, there we go. These guys are holding on to sand. Uh, what's the best one? Why is one of these here? No, not from the other container. Actually, I have an idea. Filter. And go. And 
go. That's not going to work here. Yeah, no. But let's let's start placing some pipes. That might help. Should be able to decon that. And should be able to decon that. Cool, cool, cool. And then we can place our build without losing Pyroflux. Nice. How much sand are we looking for? 40k, I think. 200 times 200. Yep. And I think this is a... It probably should be a high priority drop-off. Then again, I wonder what other things Vulcanite blocks are prioritized for. Oh, we need some modules. Uh, events chemical plant. Do we have that here? We do not. I'm uh, pretty sure we're not carrying any prod sixes right now. There we go. And whatever default we've got over here, we'll see if that works. Negative 70% power consumption. Fantastic. Oh, I forgot to remove the cheat inputs there. And we're just going to make one little update to the station name. Because this is going into advanced chemical plant. And that's the only thing that's different. All right. Activate. Oh, it is activated. Oh, that's kind of scary. That's that's kind of spooky. Provide stack threshold 120. I don't think that's entirely necessary. Um, just limit the back one to 30 stacks. Probably don't have to go that far since it's stack size 200. Gonna wait for that one. Um, yeah, I think I'll just leave these here until until that runs out. Maybe I should still have a gargantuan pyroflux storage. No, we should be able to keep up with it. Now, what are we missing here? Crushed Vulcanite, I believe, comes directly from processing core fragments. Or processing Vulcanite, rather. I do kind of want to update. Why is there no Vulcanite moving? Oh, for... Now what? Let's fix this hauler. And... I forgot to get the wall... I won't be able to board the construction ship until I grab it. Luckily, we've got a spare one built into the design. And... Where the hell... Here we go. Let's board our ship again. And Fallen 19, you are full of barrel. Please go back to Hagen Orbit. Wait, no. Go to Foenestra first. And you should have Hagen Orbit on the memory cell. Which you do. Fantastic. Let's go back to Foenestra. And 
back to our build. Um, now, how do I get all these bots back in the sh construction trains? Oh, here comes a Vulcanite. Cool, cool, cool. That's sand. What a tease. Oh, well. Uh, I need to find out why... Why Vulcanite isn't moving. I do have a system in place to make these... To self-correct with these bots. Um, it, it just means the train is going to get emptied a few times. Vulcanite core fragments. We have zero over here. Do we have any ships coming back with Vulcanite? We do. And this is totally saturated. Now, I thought I saw something yesterday that hinted that we actually do have enough spaceships. Um, I think it was the fact that we had like a couple of ships idle for a little while at the launches. But judging by the number of empty spots here, we definitely need more spaceships. So let's keep spamming spaceships until we actually get all the Vulcanite that we're mining, or at least as much of it as we need. I wonder how many we do need at this point. Where's our uranium fuel cells? I could probably drop this timer down a little bit. What's it set to? 900 ticks. I think it was ready at like 600 easily. Here we go. And there's our heat. Now we need to name this thing Iron Hauler 32. That's getting up there. It's actually quite a few less ships than I had last time, I think. I think we were getting up into like the 50s at least. Might want to stock a stack of ship wall in your construction ship. I do, yes. Just in case next time this happens. Yeah, we do hold a stack of it in there. Um, Ion Hauler 32, was it? 32, yes indeed. And launch. And anchor to Hagen Orbit. Any of the empty drop-offs will be fine. That will refuel... Uh, get given a mission and get sent to go pick up Vitamalanche in just a moment. Let's do it again. It's one thing for the base to go a little bit slower, but it's another thing entirely if we have it come up with a prior... Uh, prioritization system. If we run out of Vulcanite, everything else, a lot of other things can start to crash. And there's a few other resources like that, obviously. Especially if we ever ran out of space elevator cable, but um, our backlog of space elevator cable is quite big. So this is going to be Ion Hauler 33. And we're going to put in uranium fuel cell. Mm -hmm. I wonder if... I think I probably already thought about this. Yeah, these are only connected by these red wires. I don't have a way to, like, pulse an order to put in the uranium fuel cells automatically. Alright, let's launch you as well. And anchor... 
down here. Now, I want to check just how long does it take the bots to place the big container, usually. Is the Stone Core Planet Space Elevator working again? I did fix it. It should still be going even if everything's busted. Okay, so how many ticks is this going to be on before the big container's there? Zero. Because the spaceship clamp got placed last. But I think like 600 ticks is probably more than enough. Even with the bots building in random orders, um, it should be more than enough to make sure that we've got the memory cell, actually. That's what has to be there before we pulse that through. Alright, I think we're up to 34. Sin Eater. Um, yes. And get the fuel started. And integrity check. And launch. And anchor. Say here. I do have sort of... We're at Phonestra. I do have sort of a prioritization system. Um, what I can do is make sure there's no cooldown to send additional ships to pick up more Vulcanite core fragments, which could potentially oversend ships occasionally, but if we have literally one source of Vulcanite and it's in the same solar system, and Vulcanite's very important to us, I could also just set this to be very low, as opposed to zero. Let's say we can send... Um... How about 30 seconds? 1800. That's like half of what it's already on. Yeah. We can request another ship every 30 seconds. I think that'll maybe be enough to... Like, on average, like it's, it's, it's not guaranteed, but like, that should be enough to prioritize... ...getting Vulcanite core fragments. And the Stone Core Fragment Planet uh, does indeed have Spellevator Cables. Oh no, not this again. Why is this one different? This is the only outpost that's done this. We end up trying to drop off stuff on this side and it's full. And these guys can't leave. Well, I'm just going to update the schedule... Oops, I didn't mean for that to be and. Drop off four or five seconds of inactivity. Probably more than five seconds would be good. Where are they going? Um, inactivity, say 15 seconds. It shouldn't come up very often. Or 15, or 15, and the next one should come up right after this guy. Both of these stations are occupied though. Well, not occupied, they've got train limit zero. There we go. Or 15 seconds inactivity. Seems good. Really, really curious that this is the only outpost that's had this problem, and it happened twice, so it wasn't... I'm pretty sure it wasn't 
some manual thing that I did as a one-off. Alright. How's our new build looking? Products finished. Zero. Um, Vulcanite core fragments are coming. Fantastic. We can't get more productivity modules out of the advanced furnaces. Uh, it's it's the same number. It's five. So the only reason to update those is it would be more more powerful, more UPS friendly. But we definitely don't have a bottleneck there at the moment. How many prods do I have? Ooh, another hundred and. 79 uh, plus 6 185 now where would be the most economical place probably here that's 12 24 24 prod modules would give us significantly more pyroflux or the vulcanite blocks I could maybe remove a lot of these if I update this build, uh, and then I I replace it, but like get rid of most of the furnaces for the moment, because we only need a few. Uh, we could have tier 6 prod modules for this step as well, without investing much yet. Dilka, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Zedius, welcome in also. Should be pretty straightforward to update this thing. I mean, the furnaces are bigger, but there's plenty of room. And I kind of do. I kind of want to do another build for. I, I probably split them. For Vulcanite core fragment processing, because the ratio is going to change every time we upgrade our prod modules. How fast is this at the moment? Uh, 66 Vulcanite per second, so that's like three and a bit stacks. We could always go, uh, when we can, build the. Uh, Crushed processing next to the next to the core fragment processing. Direct belt it or just give the trains a very short trip. We're not suffering too much from Holmanite having a small stack size. I do need more purple belt over here. I totally didn't even realize that we got our purple belts back either. That's nice. Now let's immediately drain our reserves. Nice and quick. I believe it was bearings that we were shortest on. Yeah. Uh, what do we got? Like, just under another hundred stacks here. So we're just, oh, here it comes. Just waiting on one more delivery of iron, uh, iridium plate. We could update this as well, but it's not going to give us any more prod bonuses unless I spend a lot of prods. Probably better to do it earlier in the chain. Uh, this is the old barrel. We should probably get rid of the old barrel. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we should get rid of the old barrel. Let me just mark which ones of these we're getting rid of. This is already switched off. Oh. And this is... I was going to say this is new barrel, which is kind of true, but we want to replace it with... Uh, this kind of thing. No. This kind of thing. The thermodynamics facilities much more UPS friendly. 
and fast. Morpheus, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We still have purple belts over here. Or that we need, rather. Is this guy stuck? Um, kinda. Hmm. Okay, let's wait for the construction train to be resupplied. Waiting on purple belts again. We've got a hundred. What do we need here? I can't just check. Oh wait, yeah, 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 give me a regular upgrade planner, and if I hold shift, we need exactly 96 uh, purple belts and nothing else right now. Cool, cool, cool. Let's just do that now instead of waiting for the rest of it to load. And then we can set that back to what it's supposed to be. Heavy girders seem to have no beacon. They're resource bottlenecked anyway. Uh, actually, they're saturated. Yeah, I don't think we've had trouble with heavy girders for a long time. We just don't consume that many. Not like last playthrough where we were using pile drivers. Alright, uh, are we back? I think we're back. I turned off the clamp combinator. So that if I jumped into the editor, we wouldn't be left in the Shadow Realm. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What should we focus on next? Kind of want to upgrade all those old ingot builds so we have, like, far fewer machines for this. It's kind of a lot though. We do have a lot of redundancy built in though, so I could like switch one of these off. Yeah, yeah, we've got tons of redundancy. We haven't had any trouble with like iron or copper or steel for a very, very long time. Uh, so for iron or copper, I could switch one off at a time. And wait till it mostly drains and then replace it. We just put a little note here. Alright. How's our Vulcanite looking? Mm, I don't think we've had any more arrive here yet. Oh, we probably have, actually. Moss Garden Orbit. Pagan Orbit with Vulcanite. Cool. Cool. And this one's also bringing Vulcanite. Alright, our little adjustment to prioritize this one might be working. I mean, it should be working, but it's kind of semi-random as well. It's weighted. Myclat, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. This is a zero cheating stream, though. Unlike some others I could name. Uh, I'm too lazy to take these back. I'm just going to drop them off. And give me some more life support. Okay, what's next? Also, also, uh, let me just grab some spaceship floor, and I have a little idea. 
This is just somewhere I can stand to not use, uh, not use life support. That's all that is. What's the run speed for Spaceship Floor? 120%. Is this cheating? This is my life support square. Name three cheating streams? Uh, my clap, my clap, my clap? Don't worry, I wasn't looking in the mirror. Marsh, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Very unethical tea hacks. Wow. Okay. I see how it is. Holy crap, the traffic here. We've seen spikes in Spellvader traffic, but it seems to be okay overall still. But I was thinking last stream about adding another space elevator over here-ish. Oh, there's a core drill. There's a core seam here, actually. I don't think we have to worry that much about cryonite core seams, though. How many drills do we have? We've got only seven, and we haven't had the slightest thought of, like, running out, uh, like, like needing more drills for a very, very long time. So I probably could see myself paving over this one. It's not difficult to have enough cryonite. You know, putting aside interplanetary logistics. WTF Mike's here, indeed. Goat's Jam. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what should we do? What should we focus on? What indeed? Energy 4. I think we had a few things that we'd like to get Energy 4 for. Uh, obviously there's lots of things we want energy for, for, but, um, what are we even missing? Catalog for, with just the cards. Yeah, just the cards. Um, so I need to do four builds. Oh, star probe data. Oh no. That's going to be more fun and a lot more work. Hmm. I could do a dispatch system. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could make this part of the dispatch system to pick up the star probe data. Except... Except, except, except... We're not going to be picking it up in the same volumes as core fragments, right? In terms of stacks. Sending an entire spaceship to pick that stuff up is... Uh, going to be kind of excessive. But on the other hand, I don't actually want to have to build a different spaceship system to pick it up. I could maybe have an outpost where we don't wait for, like, an entire... Uh, spaceship full before we pick the stuff up. And we could launch the ship after the, after the bots have settled down or something. Yeah, that's probably fine. We'll have to build a whole custom thing for this, of course. I don't think we can easily use the editor to plan star probes either because like not not with the parallel surface to our main game actually i could be wrong about that because this doesn't transport between like other surfaces right space probe rocket silo yeah we can just place it easy and what do we put into it? Nothing but space probes. We'll have 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. This has a stack size of one. We'll have the ship deliver the space probes and return with data. How many? How much data do we get from one one probe? We get diminishing returns with um with how you say. Arcospheres, but the other ones are completely reliable, right? Oh, that's the whole thing. Cool, cool, cool. Speaking of mines, how are your uranium mines going? Um, I don't know. It's probably fine. R probably. Is it going to launch? Oh, it needs cargo. What do we put into this? Um, we need to make the probes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. Star probe. So first of all, we have to... M we have to bring... Yeah, I remember now. It's two stacks per launch. We need one space probe rocket and one star probe. And because it's stack size one, we can actually input them precisely um, with the robots. They'll never oversupply them. And then... Wait, what? Where's the data? Hold on. What? Where's the data? Oh, it has to be on the right surface. So I'm pretty sure the way this works is like with the vanilla rocket launcher. Um, This one's pretty close to how that works. Can't see it right now, but there's like... There's a container built into this that all of the satellite telemetry gets dumped into. I can't remember how much we get for each launch, though. Must be launched from an orbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, does it matter? We know the stack size. And the spaceships are going to have ample storage space. So we can just... We can treat it like a regular outpost, except we're going to be having the ships bring probes. Uh, as well as, like... Well, it's not going to be bringing spellevator cable this time. We're not doing a space elevator to the sun. Um, we'll still need ammo... Um, we'll bring bots in case something happens. We don't need space train power packs. But yeah, we can use the same spaceship system to bring the probes, ammo, and bots. And to take away data cards. And we may as well wait until there's like a whole spaceship of data cards, right? Hmm. Perhaps. So I'm pretty sure that end is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, and this is actually exactly what I was looking for. Uh, I was about to copy in here. We're going to do a copy-paste edit. to do a launcher that will send ships to go pick up um, space probe data, or star probe data. So for the icon to say ship, well, first of all, what are we requesting here? Data cards. What kind of cards? Data. Space probe data, stack size 50. 
Um, and we can fit quite a lot in one of these. 4,800. Do we really need two stations to pick them up, though? I don't think so. We could maybe just... Do it like that. And then, uh, if anything greater than 20k, let's see, we're only ever going to have long trains pick this up, right? And it's going to be LTN only, I think. Data. Space probe data. Why can't I click on it? Oh, left click. It doesn't... There's no actual recipe for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right click, it goes into catalog and nothing else. So we definitely don't need a vanilla scheduled train to pick it up. Uh, instead, we want an LTN pickup. Chen, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And we're just going to say, provide stack threshold 100. And that'll be that. Okay. No, more, more to the point. It's 2.5 times. Uh, 20,000 times 0. 0.4. 8,000 would be proportional here. Fard. No, data. Data. There we go. Alright, so if there's already like 8,000 data cards sitting in the blue chests... Don't bother dropping off with another ship. And... This'll be... Uh, data... Space probe data dispatch is the name that I'm copy-pasting here. Oh, um, I won't actually be able to put that in the blueprint. Is what I'm realizing. Do I not need another symbol? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to... For each of these space probes that we have to do remotely, I'll need one more signal transmitter over here for these. Oh, this one's on default, because I don't have outposts for rare metals. Um... How many more types of probes are there? Like two? Why can't I see it here? Probe data. It's not there. Because we don't craft it. 
There's star probe data. I think there's asteroid. Yeah, here it is. Interstellar void probe data. And asteroid probe data is in here somewhere. Is it material? No. I could have sworn there's one that we have to launch from an asteroid. Yeah, there is. It's asteroid related. So astro, astro is asteroid, energy is at the sun, and deep space is interstellar void probe data. Um, so I guess we're going to have like three more. I could put them up here, perhaps. That might look a bit tidier. Construction train is still here, but it doesn't have plating. Alright, where are we going? Down we go. And where's our train? Here it comes. It's a big old slow train. Um, let me just double check that this build is working. Still zero products finished. Um, can I trigger a delivery early? Where are you going with that? To make pyroflux. Fantastic. Takes a little longer to load the stack size 200 trains. And I think we're in business. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, I should go prod it. With tier 6s. Oh no. Shouldn't have activated that yet. 1,000 for each probe? Uh, that's pretty good. How much fits in a train? Um, 50 times 100. 5,000. So 5 launches to fill a train load. Which translates to one train load of, um, uh, catalogs. Captain True, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Did you find out how to slow the rate of trains pathfinding? Uh, no, I didn't even know if that's actually possible. I was just, uh, thinking about it. Out loud. All right. Oh, wow. I didn't realize we were this full. Okay, that's kind of good. Um, let's go get some prod sixes. Actually, come to think of it, every time I check back here, it's only... Not here. Uh, it's only prod sixes that we've been making out of the tier six modules. I wonder why that is. Iridium, Holmium. Well, those are relatively rare. What goes into the prods? Vitamelange. Which used to be really hard to get, and now we're swimming in it. I guess that explains that. It's just as well, because, well... It's kind of just as well, because we need by far more productivity modules than any other time. And the sooner that we saturate all of our builds with higher tier prod modules, 
uh, the fewer resources we need to actually bring in to get lots of stuff. Now it's like wanting some efficiency modules. Minus 80%, minus 80%, uh, minus 40%, sure, that's fine. Alright, back to the mall we go. I spill my drink. And in. Fantastic. Now then, uh, back to the editor. Oh yeah, I was trying to figure out, because I know we normally need two types of signals. Uh, we have an arbitrary signal of, like, stone to represent stone core fragments, etc. Uh, the ship at the vulcanite drop-off is ready if we're getting the vulcanite signal. So let's go with... need some train stops. And the reason I need train stops is just because uh, we can... We can use symbols in this name, but we just can't type them here. So we're going to do... X Dispatch. That's going to be... Belt Probe Data. Um, Star Probe Data. And... Last but not least. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Interstellar Void Probe Data. And... Now, why do I need... Why was it that this can't be core fragment? Because we're passing core fragment through here. Yeah, 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 and it would alter it, and that might be bad. Um, so we're receiving a signal of what we're able to... What, of what the outpost is offering. This needs to be different from that, probably. Um... Yeah, okay. So what two symbols should I use for these? Hmm. Well, for the star, I think star is fairly obvious. And then for Asteroid, uh, we can use Asteroid, Asteroid Belt. And then for Deep Space, it's Asteroid Field. Easy. Now I just have to not get confused about which is which. Uh, the actual data cards are what comes through here. Therefore, this will be sun, or star, rather. And that is star equals one. This one is going to be asteroid belt. Now I know why they call them nuclear biters, indeed. Uh, what did I say? Asteroid belt. That's negative one on this one. Asteroid 
belt, asteroid belt. And then these ones are asteroid field. Fantastic. Uh, and then I'm going to name these channels like so. Perfect. And then green wire goes here. And green wire connects all of this. So I'm actually going to need three new drop-offs for this stuff. Unless I combine them, which honestly sounds a bit sketchy. They don't have to be in a line like this. It's just, uh, I just wanted to keep the core fragment stuff organized. But we could actually put... Um, the other spaceship stop like over here somewhere close to where the data is needed in fact right next to it only trouble with that is i like knowing where the spaceships are when i'm flying my jetpack i could just put them all down here I think I will just add them down the bottom. Okay. In that case, let's get started with expanding our rail network down here. Grab our trains, if we can find them. Actually, wait for the scaffolding train first. Well, they kind of need to take turns. They're going to the same spot, right? Yes. Wait, they're going to race there. Who will win? Construction trains on the left. It's going to be the scaffolding train. That's good. Now why are you... So close to full, but not full and not leaving? Because this isn't balanced. Bruh. I guess it'll sort itself out eventually. That's all our floor. Oh, the construction train's already building this. Do we not have the solar panels? We do have the solar panels. Fantastic. Beautiful. And we're definitely not out of rail yet. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, hurry up. I didn't think it would take this long, otherwise I wouldn't have stared at it for the moment. The scaffolding train is on its way back already by the sound of it. Are you recycling lower tier modules? 
lots of resources tied up in making them. Uh, they go into the new modules, so that's not too difficult. Let's just move our train down here. The scaffolding train can path down this way. They'll all end up back in the mall, so I could just add something to... Oh, I don't even have to. It's automatic. Uh, as long as there's, like, more than 150 stacks um, of anything in the mall, it'll get offered to LTN. So it'll get delivered to... Um, uh, it'll get delivered to... Get upgraded into a new type of module. And over here, please. And over here, please. And once I queue this up, I'll just let them be, and it'll be one more pair of orders to get the rest done. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, uh, down here we've got a, a setup which will offer everything in the robot network. If there's 150 stacks of it, it's available for pickup by LTN. And since LTN is requesting all of this over here, that'll just get recycled. I'm kind of glad that we're, we're getting more prods than any other type. It's very convenient. How many do I have now? Uh, probably like 200. Almost 200. Fantastic. Have Vulcanite core fragments been moving? Basically, yes. Oh, they haven't even been... They weren't even offline for that long. Should probably keep spamming spaceships. The thing is... As much as adding spaceships will lower UPS... The ones that are sitting idle aren't going to cost that much. So if we have enough, it's going to cost about the same UPS as having slightly less than enough. Even if we have way more than enough. I believe it's mostly traveling through space, shooting down all the asteroids that's... Um, UPS intensive, that and take off and landing, all the checks they have to perform. Are we up to 34 or is it 35? This is 35. The Doombringer? Bringing doom to our resource shortages. Alright, launch. Anchor, and park yourself here, and that'll get thrown back into circulation. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to go and design Energy 4, but I got distracted. Kind of, because the rabbit hole that we're going down is necessary for all of the probe data cards. So instead of star probe data, we're going to say star to represent that the ship is ready. We're going to update this to what we were doing before.
Um, I think I know what this is, but I'll just be absolutely sure that we're copying from our other designs. If anything greater than zero on the on this memory cell output, well, not on the memory cell, but we're taking from the pulse generator that's part of this memory cell. Uh, basically, when something first gets put on this memory cell, we're going to reset the central memory cell. And yeah, there's actually not that much to change. We don't need to request uh, spell evader cables here. And we don't need space train power packs. Uh, and we don't want... Uh, star probe data to be taken out of the robot network. Star data, yes indeed. New code fragment or re refixing ships. How dare you? Um, do we need anything new, or is it just? Minus spell evader cables, minus uh, space train power packs at this outpost. I think it's just less stuff that we need. So the spell evader cable storage can go, and so can the power packs. That should be fine. And just an LTM stop to offer star probe data back to the rail network. And if anything that doesn't belong ends up in this logistic network, it gets removed. Don't hate the player, hate the impossible to track down edge case bugs, indeed. Cool. Uh, and then we're looking for star probe data equals zero in the ship as one of the conditions to relaunch. And we don't want these. Uh, well, we shouldn't need to have these remove those signals from whatever this is. Wait, no. Oh. Oh, no, 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 because these could be sent. I shouldn't have made those adjustments, um, because this can be launched to any outpost. So we do want them to be able to receive spell evader cables and so on. We're not doing, like, a separate network here. And... Storage. Uh, did I remove anything from up here? Signals. Well, three. Okay. So we want to allow all this stuff but not, not Emosite Cave Core Fragments. And we do still want to request all of this. Oh, I didn't update the station name? Are you looking to have more than one star data ship? Uh, yeah, I just want it to be part of the same dispatch network. 
so that we don't need to have a dedicated ship for it. Just like Space LTN again. I think that's just about it. Now let's grab our scaffolding train and head down here. It looks like it's not there on the map, but it is. Just hasn't refreshed because we haven't looked at it. Just need a little bit more scaffolding and then we can send the construction train to finish all of that. Actually, if I'm quick, while the train is here, let's request all the flooring. What? Oh, I didn't... It mm. I didn't include files. As a as a as a as a tiles and train stop names. All right. Let's remove that for the moment. That's what I'm looking for. This is when a space spider would be handy, indeed. I think the train's got it covered, though. What? Oh, it's the construction. It's going to bother me. Don't tell me we're out of plating. We're two off. Ravna. No, this will not stand. Grab our blueprint. Is that going to replace the... The tiles. We can fix it after the fact. This is when a space... Oh, yes, I said that. Uh, I just realized... it's I, I, If I want them to be in order, this is the one I should be building. Rip. Let's just get them done. This bothers me. Should take like three trips to finish this. Where's our scaffolding train? It's already on its way back. Good boy. And then do it again. And then we should just need one more trip after all of that. Okay. Construction train is still building. It's a little a little odd. The blueprint will override the tiles anyway. We can just run a decon planner over it in that case. Oh, it's already here, actually. 
cool, cool, cool. Oh, not even deep on, we can just copy paste. Oh, this train's trying to deliver. What the f... Uh, what? Wait, what? Hold on. Is this in the blueprint? No? What happened to this train? What? What? Did we just, like, delete a train? How did this happen? What the f... Why do you do that? What do you mean? I got eaten? Don't tell me like putting a floor under it deleted the train or something. What? Unless there's a train with a missing wagon in a depot, how would it have driven here? Like, to this exact spot. Bruh. Traffic jam aside, the rest of these trains seem fine. It was an ion fuel train. Yes, it was. Bruh. The space trees demand a sacrifice? Oh no. It could have disconnected and driven on if the signals let it, that is. Um, maybe in a depot we've got... Nope. No, I, I, I really don't think so. Uh, it'd be nice if that little icon wasn't oversized and we could actually see how long all these trains are. But no, that doesn't seem to be what happened. Just check the bots. The bots deconstructed it? Why? I didn't run a decon planner over anything. W was it when I paste? Was it when I pasted the different floors? Also, is this now not connected? Is that why it... Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. I'm just gonna go pick up that train. That's a loss of a couple of cargo wagons, a locomotive, and tens of thousands of ion stream. Because for some reason, changing the floor, I imagine made the rail go all fucky? You removed the loader from the blueprint, but it wouldn't have mattered. If the bots took it, it uh, then it's in the mall. Well, the ion stream definitely isn't in the mall. Um, like, unless we deconstructed the bulk rail unloader, with the train under it, which we didn't, because it's here. I don't remember ordering anything to be deconstructed over here, regardless. Was it a short train or a long train? Not all of it? Yeah. We've got like 36k in here, so... It must have been interrupted. Also, why are the rest of the trains not coming in? Why aren't the rest of the trains coming in here?
One sec. Fix the track? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the train can't come here because the track is not fixed. We didn't replace these. So what the hell happened? Bruh. No idea. I can't see a reason for it in the VOD. That's cool and normal. Uh, well, I don't think it would ever happen other than while we're building things, at least. It's not like it's a rare bug that we have to worry about while, thing, while the factory's just chugging along. I certainly hope so, anyway. There's no signal between the stations, so there's a chance that it drove forward with the back disconnected. Yeah, but they only ever drive to a station. They, they, they won't, like, drive into the station to stop from the opposite side. Do you need to give the blocks some bots, or is that automatic? I do need to put in the first one. And the rest sorts itself out, although apparently we're just hard prioritizing ice. Yep, back here. Did we place all of these? I think we did. Park over here, please. This one's busted as well. I'm just going to pretend I didn't see that floor. Do you need to give the blocks some... Bu yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know why I thought that popped up again. Alright. Blueprint. Now, what happens here? That looks normal. And so does this. Get out of here, space platform scaffold. Probably need our train to resupply before we do this one. We'll see. fine. And so does this. Alright. So we've got bots in this one. We need bots in this one. It should be on the way to be delivered. I might just steal a couple of bots from the others. And that should be all it takes. Eventually. Now we just need to configure these things. Um, this one is going to be... Asteroid belt probe data. Uh, 
I think that's actually all I need to change to make it functional. And... This one is going to be deep space. They all stack to 50, right? Yeah. That should be fine. Sounds like we're having a little cascade of reloading our train right now. How did it get green circuits in there? I actually can't think of a single reason that our train would have just had green circuits in it. That's very strange. Construction train go burr. It'll stop resetting once we get balanced bots in here. Which is not happening because the robots are not moving the bots first. Oh no. Maybe I should add a timer so that once the train is empty we wait like... 30 seconds or something. There we go. It's all working now. Uh, so this is going to be set to... This dispatch? Let me just double check that. No, this is ready chips. And there's probably already something on this memory cell. Nope. Uh, this one is going to be set to the dispatch channel. Where is it? And this, I think, is always set to the same thing. Central dispatch. One, two, three. That's set to central clock. And I think that's all of them. Cool, cool, cool. Now we need to configure the type of card we're checking for here. And this one should already be correct. And this one is interstellar void probe data. And I think it's ready. We don't have any ships here yet because they've never tried to drop off this stuff. Oh, and we don't report ready until there's actually a ship here. That would help. Cool. So I'm going to make a couple of new ships. And we're going to test that this will get them started. Grab a drink while that's building. Did you set the clamp IDs? I did not.
They might be set to ID 1, which would be like a default drop-off. Nope, 13. Okay. Uh, let's change those real quick before something happens. And we're going to go with uh, 18, 19, 20. Eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. And I'll just put those in here since we can still fit them. Um, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay. How's our ship? Good to go. Fantastic. What are we up to? Iron Hall of 36? Yes. So, uh, if we land this down here... It should recognize there's a ship and start giving green signals when we've got fuel, water, bots have stopped moving, uh, and there's no asteroid belt probe data. Why is that set to zero? Oh, I forgot to change this. Okay, okay. Um, so it's actually supposed to say everything equal to zero on this end. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, I th think... So if there's nothing on the memory cell, we act as if the ship is ready. It, the, the block is ready to receive orders in any case. But this would mean, if we're not running that resource, then an order could get stuck in this block indefinitely. Which seems to be happening he happening here with Holmanite. Because um, I haven't seen stone move in a long time. What am I doing? Production. Stone. We haven't produced... holy crap, we haven't even produced stone core fragments uh, in a while, which means they're totally saturated on the whole planet. We last consumed them almost two hours ago. Everything equals four? Yeah, I need to adjust that as well, but... I'm thinking I shouldn't set it up this way yet. What I could do is, for the resources that we're not moving yet, I could have it set up the old way, checking for four conditions that the ship is ready to launch before it gets given a mission. It could cause some double launches in theory, but... But that's probably fine. Yeah, I think that's probably okay. Um, if green signal equals four. If green signal equals four. And 
and if green signal equals four. So instead of checking that this memory cell is empty to report this block's ready, uh, we're going to keep checking that the ship is actually completely ready to launch. That way it doesn't matter if we're not moving these resources. We'll still... Now why are we not going to pick up stone though? That's kind of important. Um, we can orbit... This thing is negative, which suggests that... Oh no, this is very significantly positive. 10,000 ticks plus 18k. Uh, so apparently like 7 minutes, 78 seconds ago, we sent a ship wow. to come One to Toucan. Tyranno fantastic. Eagle Wolf, thank you very much for the sub. Much appreciated. One year indeed. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Um, here's the thing. I kind of need to check a lot of ships to see if they're going... This one needs rescuing. <laughs> I really want to get away from these old ships. Uh, I kind of have to check, like, every ship to make sure there's one headed for the stone planet right now. There should be, but what if it's stuck or something? This one's coming back with Holmanite. Uh, the stone planet is via Foenestra, right? Yeah, it is. I'm pretty sure. Capellus. Mm. Toucan is planet orbit 173. Anyone going to Foenestra? You're broken as well. Why are we getting so many ships that have been hit by meteors now? When it literally never happened before. Why does factory... Uh, does factory search work on ships? You could search everywhere for stone or fragment. That's not the worst idea. Um, let me jump in the ship first. Where are we going? Ion Hauler 22 is actually really, really close to getting back into the solar system. Oh, don't worry, it'll be, it'll be here in like six and a half hours. Um, 22. Okay. We go, welcome in, hope you're doing well, good to see you again. Hi, may I ask, how long have you played this save? Uh, sure. Getting close to a month. Game time. More ships equals more sh broken ships. Yeah, but it's out of proportion. Like, we literally went hundreds of hours of the ships moving around with, like, one or two broken pieces of wall. Research laser upgrade? I'm getting to it. doesn't explain why they're hit. Yeah, especially the one that was hit when it was in minimal asteroid density. That was really bizarre. Sonsan, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. And Andor Dracon, welcome in also. Why does the loader have ground rails? <laughs> Uh, same as always, um, so basically, the graphic for the rails coming out of the loader looks like regular rails, 
and the one that's here just happens to line up so that these two space rails here like overlap it and take priority graphically. Um, so we can either like have little bits of ground rail looking visible or I could move this like back one tile and it would still work but it'd look a little weird when the train comes in. Alright, we're here already. Iron Hauler 22. Uranium fuel cell. It's got room for it. And I need to go to... You know what? We can just take this one back to Hagen Orbit. It's very, very close. Send the construction ship back home on automatic. Oh. We should already be in the solar system. Ah, uh, almost. Closest. Calidus Asteroid Belt 2. We're not moving very fast. I guess it is one of our haulers. Um, but yeah, what about... What about Toucan? This is one of the problems, though, with using the anomaly. Is I can't tell which ships are <laughs> headed towards Capellus or not. Certainly not at a glance. Um, I could look for... Let me, let me check something. Search. Uh, signal. No, that's not going to work. I can't search for a value. I wanted to look for the planet orbit for Toucan on the memory cells. But... All we're able to do is look for the actual signal type itself. This will be a very convenient asteroid belt uh, outpost. It's literally just as close as anything could be to our home base. What are you moving? Vulcanite? Not Vulcanite. Feels bad, man. No matter how many ships I add out, like, some of our outposts are always just saturated. What's our ETA? 37 seconds. Do I need to go through all of our ships? I did move that last one, yes. So this one is reporting ready, but it hasn't taken off yet. Or it hasn't been given information. Did I not connect this? I think I did. Input signals, output signals. No, that should be it. It's not happening. Why is this not receiving... Blue dispatch. Oh, let me get out of this ship. There we go. Um... this one. Oh, I got these backward. Oh, no. There we go. And now there should be information on this memory cell. Fantastic. And our ship launches.
Cool, cool, cool. There seems to be over 10 ships in the same distance from Hagen. Are they having a mother's meeting? What do you mean? 12,092. Oh. Holy crap. That's really suspicious. Oh, are they all just sitting at Foe and Estra? They're all just sitting at Foe and Estra. No way. What the hell happened? Okay. What's going on here? There's nothing on the memory cell. It's busted. Spatial dist... I think... Okay, no matter how far through the spatial distortion they are, they're listed as being 1292 away. Alright, let's go through all the ones that are at Foenestra and rescue them. Which is, apparently is all of them. This one's not busted. But it has nothing on the memory cell and it came to Foenestra. Don't tell me we've got way more ships than we need. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't really mind. Maybe it was from when we had ships bouncing around between destinations earlier. And all of the ones that ended up at Foe and Estra got forgotten. Because they're kind of hard to notice. Alright, so Ion Hauler 9. First of all. This one is... doesn't have a destination. Could be a lot of things because your new ships are stuck there as well as... as well at least it was caught. I don't think the new ships are stuck there. I I'm not convinced that the way we've got things set up now, it's sending ships to get stuck at Foe and Estra. I think it was because we've had ships going back and forth for a, a while um, without, you know, all of them disappearing. I think it was probably when we had, like, ships mysteriously having a destination of Gibil or... Uh, what was the other one? Was it in the Vizana system? No. I think it was... We had ships going from Plato to Corsol directly. So... I never figured out why, and I think they could have gone to, like, any destination. There's your throughput issue, indeed. Are the reactors on the ships cooling down too far to do a quick startup? Um, it's not necessarily that they're out of power. One of them has broken wall. Waller number nine is not actually out of power. It's got plenty of heat left. Understandable, but 34 is one of the trapped ships. Is that so? No, it's not. It is, in fact, heading towards Foenestra now. Uh, it's about to be one of the trapped ships. How did this happen? Where, where did it come from? That would be very helpful to know. It's got nothing on the memory cell. How are we sending something to Foe and Estra with nothing on the memory cell except for the original request for... Well, not the original request. It's 30 uranium fuel cells, which means... Which means it came from one of the launches. Hmm. Hmm. 
Well, that's bad. That's... That's very bad. Um... Oh, of course, I didn't bring a piece of wall. Wait here, please. Let me put a stack of wall in my inventory. Why did it pick up the... What? Um... I did just remove this, right? Yeah. Where the hell did that floor go? Do I have any in here? I don't think so. No. What... What just happened to that spaceship floor? What? It's not in my inventory, right? It's not. That is beyond bizarre. In your next ship design, maybe add a roboport with repair packs? Never. Um, y'all saw there was a wall here, right? And I did like a decon like this. And then when I came back, there was missing spaceship floor. Some Mondays are best avoided. This is really Mondaying my Garfield. Uh, I, I guess we'll just remove that one for now. That should be a valid ship. Okay, how... Maybe the recycler, somehow. No, this is all copy-pasted. How the hell did it stop working? We don't reset this memory cell until the ship leaves, so that that's not going to like cause a different pulse or something. Does the floor need to be there anyway? No, it's just a little bit annoying. Where's Iron Hauler 9? Um... Please go back to Hagen Orbit. So have we just not been getting any ships back from when they're supposed to go to Foe and Astra? No, we got we got stone not that long ago. From uh from Capellus. Hell. What the hell, what the hell, what the hell? Well, let's just rescue the ships that we have here. Why are you not moving? Because you're at Foe and Astro, you don't actually need rescue. In orbit, off you go. Get to orbit. Same deal. Yeah, I think uh, all of these are just going to be... 
most likely just at Foenestra without orders. I mean, I could go to the trouble of deliberately sending them to various outposts, but there's so many. It's going to waste a bit of fuel and time, but it's not that big of a deal. Especially to get our throughput from infinite sources back. So what I need to do is watch our ships like Hawk as they leave Hagen orbit and check that the ones that go via Foenestra have something on the memory cell and if not, figure out how the hell that's happening. Many, jeez. There's like half of them. No wonder we weren't getting enough spaceships. They're gonna take like seven minutes to get back, so I should have time to get my eyes on them when they start launching again. Also, every single one of them is going to go via the, like, exception handler launcher. Oops. Um, if it's a specific launcher that is causing the problem, it would surprise me least if that's the one. But I couldn't see anything wrong with it. The only thing that's different about it is it drops off. They can drop off anything there. Where was this guy going? This guy has a destination. Um, but judging by the 2,000... I don't think we have a planet orbit of 2,000 and something. I. We definitely shouldn't have time signal 90. I think this thing got given... Destination would be 45. Which one would be 45? I, I think it was sent to Bombato orbit. Um, and it somehow received the signal pulse twice. Or for two ticks. Oh, what is with these rare bugs? Voatlin, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. This one is not busted, not quite. And... Two more. This one also has 2k on it. It was also going to Bombato, it looks like. Because that's the only one that... If we multiply 45 by 2, we get 90. And if we multiply any of the planet orbits by 3, I don't think we get... Oh, we might. We can't get 10 by multiplying by 3. So I'm pretty sure it was Bombato orbit multiplied by 2. And last is construction ship. Okay, all these guys are moving. Yes. UPS hasn't dropped as much as I might have imagined. Alright. You're waiting to do what? Oh, they're waiting to land at the generic drop-off. Which... Is not launching because we're not moving this stuff fast enough. Because I only have one train to do it, I think. Yeah.
Why is it not... Wait, why is this train not moving? Horizon Effect, thank you very much for the 19 months. Much appreciated. And welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Do you, you really don't think this guy has right of way? Just ever? I, is this why we're not moving these core fragments? Bruh. I think I need to make another train for this, though. One year, Kappa. Bye, Cal. Thank you very much for the 12 months. Much appreciated. And welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Welcome back. Okay, so... All those ones that didn't have anything on the memory cell, they're going to be trying to land here. And that's going to be bottlenecked by the train taking away random core fragments. Um, which we actually don't have enough of. To, wait, really? How can we already be about to empty this thing? Manually stopped. Oh, wait, no, that's the new one I was making. We get back in 25 seconds. Yeah, this guy's always here and is for some reason low priority to get let through the space elevator with the signal traffic. That doesn't work out so well. And is that finally the end of... Yeah, everything here is empty. Oh, it's just contents of the robot network, so that was already okay. Alright, so we should have ships landing here. Um... Oh, I just remembered. The problem with this thing was it acts like a default landing pad. The logic on the ships is... Whatever's on the memory cell, including the adjustment to the drop-off point, isn't passed through to the console until we arrive at our destination. When distance signal is negative one. So, the moment that the ship gets to the destination, there's like a few ticks, at least one tick anyway, where the drop-off target is ID1. Are these our haulers that were stuck in Phonestra? Some of them, yeah, it looks like it. So all of these are going to have to go through that drop-off, but we'll likely have a ship landing there first. I think we got lucky. It looks like most of them are going to... are going to get there while there's nothing, no core fragments to move. Okay. That's a lot of ships. That's a lot, a lot of ships. Oh, wait, I think I might know. I might know the answer. I, I know what I did wrong. I didn't account for the stuff being on the memory cell when the ship gets here. That we then pulse it onto the ship. Okay. Um, I'm going to quickly change this so no one lands here. Whoops. Uh, one, 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 one. There we go. So even though this had a destination when the ship got here... 
which is 683. I think that one's remote. Oh, there's no Foenestra signal on this, so this one will work properly. Uh, what used to happen... Why is that so far away? Oh, I see. What used to happen was... We didn't put something onto this memory cell until there was a ship here ready to go. And that one should be fine. He should be going directly, not by a Foenestra. Yeah, Stromhurst orbit. Uh, when we changed it so that the dispatching system can put... can put stuff on this memory cell and then move on and put stuff on another memory cell, even if there isn't a ship here yet, I forgot to change it so that, like, what normally happens is the moment we put something on that memory cell, we pulse it through here to the memory cell that's on the ship that's already here. So what I need to do now is account for that. If I assume that there's something on the memory cell when the ship gets here and pulse it through then, then we might pulse through nothing and later receive something here. Uh, I guess that would... This pulse generator that we've already got would already fix that. Also, I'm realizing I didn't need another pulse generator here. I could have just... Uh, moved that wire down here. That Actually, I might not have been able to avoid contamination. No, if I got a green wire from this one, just like I did with this, I could have avoided having another couple of combinators here. Because only for one tick does this thing output when it first receives something for the memory cell. So I could get rid of these two, do a green wire down to here, make that little wire red so it doesn't interfere with these signals. And then we've reduced our combinator count by two. But then I need to account for there's no ship. There's something on the memory cell. The ship arrives. When the ship just arrives, we reset the memory cell. That always happens. When something gets put on this memory cell, we try to put it on the ship's memory cell. If there's already something on the memory cell, ship arrives, reset memory cell, and then... I could just add, like, I a decider combinator here that detects the R value from this and says if R is greater than... Uh, if, if, if R is equal to 1, output everything to copy from the memory cell to here. Yeah, I think that's it. I think it's not that hard, surprisingly enough. Um, but I kind of need to... Are you going to phone Astra? No... Okay, first of all, I need to shut down Dispatch. Uh, that's easy enough. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. Uh, hopefully we don't have any more that are being sent to Foe and Astra right now, but if, that, if there are, we'll just go check on them in like seven minutes or something. Um, I need some... Combinators... Actually, I'm pretty sure the combinators that are already there will be more than enough to fix it. Because we're reducing our combinator count slightly. 
but regardless, I'll make sure I'm carrying some. And I need to fix this guy as well. Where's our train stuff? Also, I didn't replace that fluid train yet. It seems like we've got enough of them though. Oh, we don't need batteries in this one, because it's always in orbit. This one, on the other hand... Need some solar panels... And off you go on your merry way. Hello, Sigma Bean. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I kind of set this up so that we assume there was only one train. It's not going to a depot stop each time. That could cause traffic problems. Let's see how it goes. Um, and then, we just borrow this train. We're going to start at the north. So that little mistake actually led to making some improvements. Again. Iteration is fun. Okay. Um, so instead of this pulse generator that comes from this memory cell and goes to the ship's uh, memory cell, we're going to... skip that entirely. We're going to get the green output from this pulse generator that goes to this memory cell. So if the ship is present when this thing populates, uh, that's going to go to the ship. And if, it's, if the ship comes after there's something on this memory cell, we're going to detect the R for reset um, for the ship's memory cell from here. And if R is equal to 1, output everything. And that's just going to go here. And I might put a red wire there so it's not going to like loop to itself. Oh, green to green, that would be a problem. If I use red from this, that's the memory cell, that's going to be a problem. Otherwise I'd be able to just use one more combinator here. Um... If I go green wire from here to here, it's going to go to this guy. And it's going to reset the central memory cell. Just because the just because a ship landed. I don't want to have to have a separate pulse generator when we're already we've already got this one here. It's another case of one more wire color would be very very useful. It looks like it looks like I could get away with the red wire that goes to the ship's memory cell. Where do we have a ship? Literally nowhere. 
Okay, let me look at one of our ships. Here we go. Red wire goes to the memory cell input and nowhere else. Okay, that's good. So this red wire here I could use to check for R for reset. And then we can just take this green wire, which is only touching input, 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 and this one output. Um, how can I make these wires less of a mess? It makes perfect sense what we're doing with them, but just the angle of them, they're going to be incredibly difficult to read. I guess this is going to be the best we can do. Unless I run this green wire all the way up here and we have like two green wires stretched out like that, that's hideous. Okay. So the red wire input for this one is checking for R for reset for memory cell. Um, a couple of ticks later, it'll receive what's on this memory cell. If it's already there. And if it's not already there, uh, the ship is already here, and when something gets put on this memory cell, it'll get passed through this guy directly. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that should be all it takes. Alright. Is all of this generic? Can I copy-paste it? I think I can. There's nothing that we edit here for each launcher. I wonder if this is a fork Color theorem problem? I wonder what that is. I'm going to keep that in my copy paste just to make sure I've got it right, but I don't want to actually use the copy paste. I think it's going to link something that I don't necessarily mean it to. So we can remove these two, put a decider here, uh, and I think I can just copy paste from there actually. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. Because we're only adding wires. Oh, I forgot one, one little detail. I need to remove the green wire from this. Which didn't actually reset the central memory cell, because these are all negative, and this says anything greater than zero. I could have set this to anything not equal to zero earlier. But I did not. Four color theorem states that no more than four colors are needed to color a map in a way that two adjacent regions have the same color. Okay. No matter how the regions are shaped. It's the color scheme that, for example, rail segments use in Factorio, you see. So we're not talking about a literal map. No two adjacent regions have the same color, the no is important. Okay. I, I thought that's what you meant. Um, maybe I failed to correctly read the misstated part. All right, let's keep patching. Just delete those two and paste like this. Oh, hello. Is there already something on this memory cell? There is not. This might actually be a good test. It's 
So the ship is already here and there's already something on the memory cell, so it's not triggering a condition to put something on this. Um, I could force a memory cell reset. I just need R to appear on... this red wire. And it's going round in circles. That's not good. Oh, right. Oh, no. Um. If R is greater than zero, output everything includes R. Where is this guy going? Verb T orbit, that won't cause any problems. It's got nothing on the memory cell. Yeah, I kind of made a loop. I think I can still do it with the same combinators. Um, I can just take... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so first of all, halt. And let's make the same correction up here. Or semi-correction. And very, very conveniently, this, this is the last one we have to fix. Uh, I think we can just take, instead of looking for R, we can look for green greater than red from here. So same thing, if ship just arrived, output R, and then if ship just arrived, output everything. Um, everything input count. Which is going to output, like, a green signal, but I don't think I care. And this is going to take one tick to get to here, and this is going to take uh, one, two ticks. So it's actually as fast as it could be. To put something onto the memory cell after after the memory cell gets cleared. How much further do I have to go? Here we go. Where, where's the one where I'm standing around? Uh, I've lost track of where I am. All the way down here. Let's go up to the spell evader. That should be all of them. Alright, so we got green, red, red with the alt view on this. That way we're passing through like a green signal instead of an R signal through to the memory cell. So then we just go delete, delete, paste. Delete, delete, paste. What's this guy doing? Wait, was that the same up here? Yeah, I guess it was. I thought I heard two items get placed, though, last time. Was something supposed to be different up here? I don't think so. And that should be it. 
Now, why don't we have ships landing? I did stop the dispatching system from putting stuff onto these memory cells any longer, but I don't know why our ships aren't landing, actually. Oh, right, because they're all going to land at ID1. There's lots of them here that are doing that anyway. Okay, so ship memory cell is empty, and it's got a green. That seems to be working. But... It... Huh? Oh my god. I think I made a mistake. This one was supposed to have input from this one, not from this one. Okay, try again. Try again. Where is this one going to launch to? Moss Garden? That's local. It's not going to cause a problem. Um... Yeah, the everything that we're passing through is supposed to come from this memory cell, not this pulse. So we need to disconnect those two. This goes here, and this goes here to look proper messy. Maybe I could rotate that around. Yeah, that's a lot cleaner. I like that. All right, once more with feeling. We're going to... I'm at the bottom one, aren't I? We're going to delete that combinator and paste. Oh, some of these have construction bots. Well, that's kind of handy. Where are you going? Uh, I don't want to lose my position. Why do only some of them have construction bots? Because I accidentally left some, that's why. Alright, now I just fly past all of these to make sure they all got updated. Hurry up, bot. If they're pointing down, they should be correct. Oh, no. Wait, no, that's fine. Go away, smoke. Um, I don't think that green wire should be there, but I don't think it's going to cause any problems either. I'll get rid of it after I update all of these. Last one. Alright. I didn't check where that ship was going. Did it already leave the solar system? I think it was headed for Verb T. Most likely. Or this could be it. That's also local, so that's fine. It doesn't matter what's on the memory cell if it's going local. Alright, so I want... 
this constant combinator to only deliver to this decider combinator right here. It's just a bunch of negatives to remove certain things that we don't want to pass through to the memory cell. Um, and this is an each greater than zero output each. Uh, and this thing is looking for anything greater than zero, and this is an output. So I'm pretty sure what I'm doing right now has no effect. Um, but the wire is superfluous, and I certainly want to minimize the chance for mistakes. Once this ship launches, let's see what it's up to. Looks like it's empty. It's got something on the memory cell here. Uh, and this is some kind of destination. I think it's going local, but it had stuff on the memory cell. Let's see. Moss Garden Orbit. 1.1k moon orbit. I, I don't even have to look. I know that that's accurate. Automation signal 1170. Like, I think all of these are 1100 something. Seems to be working. Also, we can now tell by looking at the memory cell if... If there was already something um, on the memory cell at the drop-off slash takeoff point. Or if it received uh, something... After it landed. Green means there was uh, that it was already waiting to be put on the ship. Excellent. Okay, now for our exception handler, we put this back to ID 1. And it gets its destination. Moon orbit 1.1k. Time is 25. Cable's 438. Seems to be working well. It's going to take just a little bit longer before it launches because it's waiting for... Looks like it's fuel. I mean, it's just taking time to push the fuel into the ship. We're not short on ion stream. And this little dance will repeat. It, I could tell immediately, because the bots are putting cables in here, that the memory cell is working. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and we've... It, it's it's going to take a little while for all of these to automatically land and launch. I guess it's actually kind of handy. They're going to be, like, kind of close together, but a little bit spaced out. If we've got more ships than we need, which we should, it should mean we end up with a pretty smooth distribution of spaceships. Didn't even see it, but one did just launch just now. Oh, here we go. Um... No? Why is there nothing on this memory cell this time? We literally just saw this work. Why does this one not have something on this memory cell? Is it because the ship swapped out so quickly? Is that why we get... Is that why we got those rare bugs in the first place? Yeah, this one worked. Hmm. There's not really a whole lot I can do about that. Except for, like, what I've already done, which is to have this, like, exception catcher drop off. Well, that kind of makes me feel better. 
We go into Plato Orbit. We don't need Phoenestra, so it's okay that there's no memory cell this time. Um, but that's actually really disturbing because we fixed it, but it's still possible rarely for a ship to just get sent to Phoenestra for no reason. If I was going to have an outpost at Foenestra that would catch them if they get confused there, it would have to have ID1, which is the same as all of our outposts, which means li literally everything would land there, which defeats the purpose of having a memory cell in the ships. It also wastes a bunch of fuel. Is there some very specific timing where we wouldn't end up with something on the memory cell? Ship arrives, stuff that's already here gets passed through. Ship is already here. There's nothing on this memory cell. It receives something that gets passed through. If it resets uh, one, two, one, two, basically two ticks after the ship gets here, the memory cell resets. If we just got information here, this takes one tick two ticks to get sent to the memory cell. So if it arrives on exactly the same tick, it's starting to sound like uh, it would get wiped, but then it goes to this memory cell, which outputs to here. Oh, is there literally one tick where it wouldn't get through? So let's say Let's say at the exact same tick, we output R onto this, and we output what was received over here, that just got here. One tick after that... No. On the same tick, we're outputting everything input count to here from this from this memory cell which is like a tick or two too early uh, do I need to add some arbitrary combinators just to delay the signal I really don't want to have to do that But I think I might. Because if this just arrived, one tick later it's input here. Okay, this outputs and then the next tick this outputs the same thing. Okay. So between these two, they should output at the same time, but the timing on these two is different. Are they all going to different locations now? Yeah, they would be. I've had to do it in some of my circuits, indeed. Especially with um, AAI vehicles. Rennes orbit, Exorion orbit. Well, we're always going local. 
I'm not getting the opportunity to check if if going via Foenestra is working. Where is it? I should go stand next to this so I can switch back and forth. Okay, this one's via Foenestra. And... Why does it not have a Foenestra sig? Oh, because it doesn't need it. It goes straight here. Yes. This is Foenestra. This is destination once we get to Foenestra. That's actually working perfectly. But yeah. So, this is outputting R, and one... One, two ticks ago, we received something from Central. On the same tick that we output R, we output everything here. Which means that the tick before we output R, we had to have something on this memory cell. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's like one or two ticks where the ship could arrive and it wouldn't get anything on the memory cell. Is it one or two though? I think it might be two. These two have the same condition. R goes here. And everything goes through here one tick later. One, two... One, two... So I think it's literally the ship arrives the same tick as this arrives. And then one... Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two. Because this only receives, this condition is true for one tick. Oh, and then, uh, so if I do this, if, if I do what I'm thinking of here, and I add like a constant, well, not a constant, a decider combinator or two, uh, some kind of long combinator or two here to make the green and or red signal take a tick or two to get to this decider combinator. Now I have to be really careful that I'm not going to double up on the information. That logic set up there hurts my brains, indeed. Johan Anderson, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What are we doing today? Debugging combinators, apparently. Uh, basically, I made an improvement uh, that sort of came with a little bug which was dispatch sends uh, the information that's on the memory cell to a drop-off slash launcher, whether there's a ship here or not. And then I didn't realize I wasn't making sure the ship gets something put on the memory cell um, if it arrives after there's something here. We just had like a pulse generator between the two. So now I'm setting it up so that if the ship just arrived, passed through what's on this memory cell, 
as well as pass through, like, if if we just received something while the ship was already here, pass it through here to go to the memory cell. But I think there's, like, one or two ticks with really, really precise timing. If we receive something on this memory cell just as the ship lands, uh, it could take off without something on its memory cell. And I'm trying to figure out timing so that I can have it both ways. Hmm. Perm, I say. Very tricky. Have we actually been... Oh my god, that's a lot of ships. I think we may have been actually keeping up with Grannis' production now. Look, it's not full right this second. Now, why are we killing bots, though? We're supposed to be deliberately keeping them at 50... Why does this one have 61 logi bots? Probably because they got kidnapped. I need some construction bots. What is that emote? Break? Corruption? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think what I would have to do is, if the ship arrived, pass through what is already on the memory cell, but pass through an R signal right before we do that, and delay it by like two ticks. And then... Is it still possible to, like... There would still be one frame where it would be possible to get a double input. Oh. And there'd be no way to check... I think I need to do that at both ends. Send an R signal and then send the stuff through. And this one that just arbitrarily resets it as soon as it gets here would not be needed. Although it does ensure that we get the u uranium fuel cells. So basically we're going to say... If ship just arrived, send R and then send information. Or if we just received data, send R and then send information. So I think I need like three combinators, or at least two combinators for each of those. This is going to look something like... If condition... Let's say it's this. If this condition output everything input counts twice, I mean, this one could be unconditional, but it makes it clearer what's going on. And then down here, output 1R.
and these are going to have the same input. So like that's going to happen at the same time. One tick later we output R, two ticks later we output everything that's uh, supposed to be passed through. And I could probably... If I run... What's this? I, I, I can't... T it's probably Nalvis. I said it's probably Nalvis. Uh, great. I don't know where all those damaged things just came from. Probably a crashed asteroid. Ooh, we're getting very close to being able to declare Nalvis extinct. Well, the bite is on now of a sixteenth. Very nice indeed. Trouble is, you need C dot one slash two hour after ship changes to see how it's behaving. Oh yeah, yeah. It takes time to figure out if it's all working. I'm pretty sure it would still be, no matter how I try and lay this out, uh, I'm pretty sure it would still be possible to have a fluke um, double up of the data from the memory cell. Because if, if the ship arriving and the data arriving happened perfectly in sync, there'd be no way to check... Hmm. Oh, what a pain. Unless I can read the memory cell from the ship, which I don't think I can, just with the shape of the wires and everything. I've already got two wires in use going to the clamp. If I had another clamp just for the memory cell, this would have been a lot easier. I'll have to have a think about it. You know what I could do? It's a bit budge, but... Instead of having it come from two possible places... I could have this memory cell reset as soon as the ship arrives. Yeah, we don't have to, like, tell Central when this is emptied or anything. Instead of resetting this memory cell when the ship leaves, we could reset it when the ship arrives. We could, we could reset both the ship one and the local one. And then that completely defeats the purpose of how I set it up so that Dispatch can put something on this memory cell and then move on to the next one. Well, not quite. Because if we have enough spaceships and we end up with spaceships sitting here waiting for orders, because the core fragments aren't ahead of us. Then it'll prevent double launches, it'll allow dispatch to send stuff to one after the other. Uh... 
right? Yeah. It does mean we're gonna ditch a job after an outpost has finally sent through a request and it's got a cooldown based on that request there's every chance that that request is just going to be thrown out. Can't say I'm a fan of that. Hmm. I guess what I have to do is, instead of unconditionally pulsing when this gets populated, if there's already ship here, uh, we have to... We have to check if there's already a ship here. What are we bonking for? Hmm. This is difficult. What was I thinking a moment ago? What's this? Taken train flying obo train flying obo odo benis entered depot with left over cargo. No, no, don't just tell me that and then not show it to me and then let the train keep going. What? Also. I've said this before, but LTN, for the love of God, let me put a condition here that the train has to be empty before it leaves the depot. Now I don't know where this rogue train is. That's kind of a problem. There's going to be random items dropped in some drop-off somewhere. And that's if we're lucky. Okay. Um... Let's think through what we're trying to do here from scratch. We want to be able to put something on this memory cell and hold onto it until the ship arrives and put it on. But we also want that to get passed to the ship if it arrives after the ship is already here. But we want to make sure we can't accidentally double up on the two even if it's frame perfect. So what we're doing right now is pulsing it to the ship when it first arrives. And we're pulsing what's on the memory cell to the ship when the ship first arrives. If I can say, don't pulse this through... If we're on the exact frame where the ship just arrived... Oh, that's going to be difficult to figure out the timing. So basically, if not this, pass through everything. But it has to be frame perfect. It's 
So if the ship arrives and this signal arrives at the same tick, uh, one, two ticks later, signal R from the left. I'm going to write this down. Okay. Um, one, two ticks later, we receive, okay, same tick, two would have received data from central skip memory cell. Uh, on what tick do we find out? One, two, this would be outputting. Which is one tick too early for this to output. Right? One tick. Green one, red zero. Two tick. One tick, two tick, three tick. Okay. Everything's happening on tick two. Um, let's call it ship just arrived, passed through. Tries to output from local memory cell. Not yet populated one tick early. Also, if I, if I delay this by one tick, it stops being a problem, but only for that exact timing. What if this comes one tick earlier? That doesn't fix it. Um... So we need to... Do we need to? So with that timing we end up with nothing, right? Yeah. We could solve that by simply... having this... delayed by one tick? Question mark? But then, what if... What if this happens one tick before the ship gets here? One... Oh, sorry, is it one tick after the ship gets here? Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hmm. This is confusing. Sheep say mayor, thank you very much for the 10 months of the Prime, much appreciated. And welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well, good to see you again. I think I'm going to take a little break from this, and just hope for the best for the moment. Looks like all our ships are moving again. What's this guy doing? Trying to drop off Vulcanite, and don't tell me. We are actually saturated on Vulcanite? Yes, we are. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Look at all that area under the graph. And that means we're going to not have severe problems on Vulcanite shortages. Probably. Uh... 
The thing is, because of the way Factorio Combinators work, if we end up mashing these two together on the same tick, there's no way to check, at least not that I can think of. Unless we're checking the exact timing of when the ship arrives versus when this happens, which I guess is what I was trying to figure out. This would output red one tick later. Maybe I could use that. Nope, I've had enough of that for now. Let's uh, let's do something easy for a bit. Something not so mentally taxing. What should we do? I could start working on the other three data card builds for energy four. That's going to that's going to be like taking a vacation. Add to this. Okay, into the editor we go. And delete all that. And fill it in again. Plating goes here, and uh, what are we trying to make here? Catalog for boson fusion test data and magnetic monopole data. Oh, I forgot to check what we used to make those. Uh, particle Collider, Particle Collider, and Particle Collider. Fusion Test Data, Boson Data, and Magnetic... Monopole data. This is so straightforward now. Compared to what we were doing. Okay, so two of these make junk data cards. I think I'll put those in the same block together. And... What do we need? One solid in, two solids out, two solids in, one, uh, two solids out. Wait a sec. No, that's fine. They both need negative 273 degree thermofluid as well. Very convenient. All right, all right, all right, all right. So that can go... Oh no, we need two fluids in for this one. For both of them, actually. Well, at least it's going to be symmetrical. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I probably already have a layout that... Um, that I can steal from for this. Particle Collider? That's what we're using, right? Yeah. Let's see. One fluid in. No, this one's a bit different, I think. Or did I trim that down from something like this? Yeah, that pipe's actually not going anywhere. <laughs> Oops. Don't believe no one called me out for that. Um, 
but yeah, this is probably it right here. Let's put this one on the right side. First. All right, first of all, where does our drop off fit? This goes here. And then let's change it to this recipe. Is it going to be okay throughput wise though? You know, I don't necessarily have to ratio this for tier 9. Since like 3 of most data cards per second was the ultimate goal. So what's this like? 3.2 per second? All of the solids are really slow anyway. We probably could go to tier 9s without changing this. Plus 400% power. Minus 80. Okay, so what kind of rate are we looking at? It's still really slow. Compared to belts and pipes. So we don't have to change that design at all. Although maybe superior inserters would be more UPS friendly. Probably should have just used a module inserter here. Particle Collider. Oops. That doesn't... Oh, I remember why I don't do that. It doesn't work that way. And one more. Okay, okay, okay. And exact same thing. But flipped. Actually, is that going to work? I don't think so. Yeah, I think we just copy it. Although, symmetry sake, I can swap this around. Let's put another drop off up here. That's obviously a slight problem. But let's just check. We're looking for boson data on the left. Oh. And 
magnetic monopole data on the right because they've got the same byproducts. And do we have room? I think we do. Well, that that's a bit that that's a little bit unfortunate. Hmm. Oh, that bit's actually a different width, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this should go one tile to the left. And that part should be swapped around. All right. That is right. Probably. So this part can be flipped. And how's that going to work out? This needs to be particle stream. And I'm not sure what's going on here. I guess do it like this. And negative 275 degree thermofluid. Goes here. And we probably only need one drop off for the whole block for those two, uh, for the thermofluid. Yeah, it's like a hundred per second. This can move over here, and that is a little bit of a nuisance. That actually fits reasonably well. Let's grab a seven, and that's going to be three. Very good. Now this isn't... oh. I was going to say that's not lining up very well. Wait, one off? No! Alright, fine. Make another little underground here. Alternatively, how many tiles is this? Exactly five. It's fine. So I think that's our fluid input for this side. And we only need blank data cards, so it doesn't matter if it comes in imbalanced. I would, however, like to make sure we use fast inserters. Even if they're not strictly necessary. And it's a shame the thermo fluid doesn't line up very conveniently. I don't think I can just rotate this, no. In that case, 
This would have to go to here. That's looking very awkward. I think I'll just do another drop off. And we can connect them. Oh, the train stops in the way. Oh, wait, no, that's not going to be the same. Never mind. It's fine. This is fine. So that could just go... One, two, three, four. Something like this. Isn't that eight tiles? Yeah, it is. God damn it. That seems tidy enough. I keep forgetting that's where the thermo fluid's supposed to go. You know what? At this rate, maybe it would be easier to put thermo fluid here, but that's not keeping with the pattern. It's not going to be so symmetrical, though. And that's terrible. Yeah, close enough, I guess. Actually, I kind of want that to be underground, and then we can do the same thing over here. Alright, they've all got input, uh, and then proton stream, wait, yeah, proton stream, all have inputs, so two fluids, and then we just need two solids for this one, one solid for this one, so this one's basically done, right? Pretty sure. Blank data card. Oh, it's a bulk rail unloader. Yeah, there's a reason I don't do it that way. Uh... So these should all work now. And we're looking for boson data. Cool, cool, cool. And then... How am I going to do the rare metals and electro... Uh, we've got room. It should be fine. Let's do it like this. And that might have to move. Can it move? Not really. Alright, how about this then? I don't love that, but it works. What do we consume more of? They're exactly the same. 
rare metals and electromagnetic field data. Where is it? There it is. And then set filters blacklist. So we'll only put a little bit of each in here. And I'm realizing there's going to be a balance problem. How much do we consume? 5.4 per second of each. I'm pretty sure we calculated it was quite small with even tier 9 modules, right? Let's tier 9 this thing. Plus a thousand, eleven hundred percent. Uh, plus 400, minus 80, and multiply that by 8. It's still only 14 per second for each solid input. So we can just do a, a single half belt for the entire thing. And if we just ask for one train load and a half of each item, uh, then we can push everything into this container with no issues. And that should be just fine. And then we can have this lovely thing over here. How much blank data cards are we consuming? That same, exactly the same. In that case, I kind of want to do the same thing. So here's what here's what we're going to do. This way as well. Cool, cool, cool. And I'm realizing we need three pickups because we've got two actual products and one pickup for junk data card and thermo fluid. So where are we going to fit? Probably on the right side, because train stop is on the right. I'll just go for bulk rail loader, like so. We'll output our junk data cards this way. And then, that doesn't actually quite line up the same way I was hoping. Come to think of it, the entire thing, for outputs, we're looking at like 12 per second. So we could be a little sneaky. And merge it in like this. Kind of neat, as opposed to like a splitter here and like this goes down one more tile. Yeah, I, I don't think I hate that. And let's do the old junk data card balancer like this. Mm. 
Okay. I need the right filter on this thing. Magnetic monopole data. And this one is already correct. And this is going to be a high priority pickup. That's already good. Uh, limit each wagon. Whoops. And this is also where we're going to do our 25 degree thermofluid. What? Oh, is that the wrong type of pipe? Yeah, there we go. Easy enough. And this is not our first... Junk data card plus 25 degree thermo fluid pickup, nor will it be our last, I imagine. Cool, cool, cool. And then we just do the usual drop off station, uh, pickup stations. Fantastic. Alright. We need the 25 thermo to find its way over here. Could just bring it all down this way. How's that line up? How about this then? Do we have a 9 or 15? 15's a bit too big. 9 is one tile too small. Uh, okay then. I see how it is. can just put that straight down there. Fifteen plus twelve. Hmm. That's not going to reach. Oh, it does. And this one also does. Symmetry for the win. And then maybe something like... Mm. Mm. I guess I could do a couple of fives. Grumble, grumble. Alright, those are all connected, right? Looks like they're working again. So, yes. Alright, let's trim the... plating. And let's add a little bit more. Make it look nice. Don't really like those gaps in there. That's a bit better. Mm, 
probably just fill that one in. Let's get rid of our test inputs. It actually looks nice enough. Don't really mind this. One, two, three. How many tiles is that? Two, three, four, five. Seems a bit more consistent. Get rid of this. Boop, and a boop, and a boop. Now why don't these look similar? Because this goes all the way up here, and this has a belt. So it's like this side. Kind of. Oh, I see. It's different. That's probably fine. Don't forget some signals up here. That looks fairly tidy. Alright, don't forget our green wires. Got LTN. I'm gonna need to do some requests. That's gonna be pretty straightforward. This is boson data. And this one is magnetic monopole data. Cool, cool, cool. What kind of rate do we get for these two? One per second and 1.6 per second. Pretty slow for a half block with tier 3 modules. But I'm sure we'll be fine. And then over this end, we need thermofluid. Also fluid and blank data cards. Not a hundred K. Um just pretty much any amount should be fine. Pretty sure seven point five K is one point five train loads. Fantastic. On trains only. And this is requesting Was this boson? Yes. Blank data cards, thermofluid, and particle stream. Are the inputs slash outputs flipped on left versus right? Uh, no? Which ones? Noised, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome in Rayclaw. I could remove the space under this thing, but that actually looks kind of cool. Remove the plating, rather, and replace it with space. After playing some time with SEK2, what's your opinion versus vanilla SE? 
Uh, I think I like K2 better. Yeah. Although some of it was a bit of a pain, but I like the bigger toys. Already named these stations. Fantastic. And on this end, we're going to have a similar name, but we're looking for magnetic monopole data. We're dropping off green stuff. And we're dropping off uh, rare metals and electromag field data. And I completely forgot to commit the changes there. Rare metals, electromagnetic field data, proton screen, and we're making, uh, I believe it was magnetic monopole data, yes. And I haven't done the LTN requests yet. Rare metals. Uh, fifteen hundred. That's not right. Yeah, fifteen thousand. For some reason, I thought that was too much. And the other thing was electromagnetic field data. Seventy five hundred. A hundred K for these two. And that should be it. Red wire on pumps. Uh yes, good point. Thank you. Oops, that doesn't connect there. Uh, it goes to the logistic train stop output. So here we are looking for particle stream. Uh, I should have copy pasted that because it was already correct for these ones. And this is particle stream. Did I say particle stream over here? I meant proton stream. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. I think that's it. Don't worry about that. I was thinking you were making the same thing on left versus right. They are different recipes. Yes, indeed. Alright. Blueprint. And... This will be two-thirds... Oh, sorry one half of our uh, tier four energy signs for data cards, boson data and mag magnetic monopole data. It's two thirds of the builds that we need for just the local area. You know, other than making the catalogs and stuff. Boson and Mag Mono Data. Tiles, train stop names, remove the cheat items. And apparently we're missing some scaffolding over here. It's fine, I'll fix that later. Seems good. And where should I put this? Over here. Now where are we going to put it though? It wants blanks, rare metals. Uh, everything's so slow I don't think it really matters where we put it. Let's just put it close to the tier 4 build. We're going to have three data card builds 
uh, and one spaceship dropping off data cards. So I'll put them here, I think. Oh, and when I say three, I mean two, because this is going to be a two-in-one. All right, may as well build that here. Fantastic. Let's start with our scaffolding frame. And we're going to need uh, 16, I think. 16 what? Colliders. Here it is. Was it 16? Or was it 24 or something? Nope, 16 colliders. Oh, we can only fit 12 in here. Uh, don't really need an electric boiler or a space clamp right now. How about we remove these two? That's 14. Um, don't need lamps or... I'm, I'm trying to not remove the things that are... Most generic. Add on power poles and lamps. Don't need those right now. There we go. Wait for inactivity. And apparently we need to make another lap with our scaffolding train. You are missing some solar panels on the blueprint. Yes, I know. I just kind of ignored it this time. Here comes our construction train. Let's get it to wait indefinitely. And I'll take a little break after this one. Fire up some words on stream. Because streamer needs food badly. Oh, there's a couple of sneaky bits of uh, gaps between the machines that I didn't notice. Actually, did I? Yeah, I'm pretty sure those were, like, invisible to us. Where's our scaffolding train? Here it comes. Getting a little lurchy. It's probably because we're placing signals. Oops. Um. Are we good to go? Looks like it. Fantastic. And the trains are already on their way. Might need another lap because we need more pipes. Quite likely. That's pretty satisfying to watch, though. Oh, they're still going. And... That's 
that's the left side working as long as we have thermofluid. Right side is... We should have tons of royal uh, rare metals. What was the other one? Data cards. I think I remember those data cards being highly in demand from last time. Uh... These ones? They're right next door. If we just picked them up, maybe we're already... Yep, dropping them off. Fantastic. Very good. Did we actually finish the build already? We did. Left side's working. Right side is waiting for rare metals, and here it comes. And that's it. It's getting outputs. And there it is. Two of the three data cards that we need for energy for. That's some setup, thank you. I presume that's a compliment. Skelgard, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Let's fire up words on stream. It is. Thank you very much. And... Oop. Oh, and don't forget to fire up the LTN screensaver. There we go. Alright, streamer needs food badly. I'll be back in a few minutes. We'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Okay, how are we doing? Beads are doing just fine, it seems. Even though they need Vulcanite blocks. How's our Vulcanite supply doing? Uh, are we actually starting to accumulate Vulcanite or no? 6k plus 14k, 20k. There's just slightly less than one train load here, so no. Alright, are we done with the words? Looks like it. Nicely done. Oh wait, are we still doing words? No. I was just lagging. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Alright, uh, what should we do at this point? We've got... I forgot to label these. Feeling much better after that little refresher. Alright, boson data and... Magnetic monopole data is here. And we've already got like 10 stacks for each. Um, what else? I think I want to do the next data card build for... The, the final data card build for energy science, not counting um, the probe launches. And I'll probably just do that in half a block if I can. And we'll probably do a little half block build for um, to make the probes. Or well, not the probes, but the star probes specifically. Okay. Um, I want to make sure we have the solar panels this time. Plating goes here, and I think it was an, yet another recipe using particle colliders. Only this one is much simpler. One solid, one fluid in, and one solid out. Just incredibly basic, uh, especially for this stage of the game. And then let's make sure if we upgrade to tier 9 someday that the rate is going to be reasonable. Negative 80%. Plus 400%. And that's actually all we can fit. Is 8 of these. That doesn't look right. Uh, strictly speaking, we could go for 12 if we really want to. That's a lot of proton stream. That's not that much. Oh, this is not lined up either. This happens all the time with these machines. It's hard to see where they actually go. So, one belt in, one belt out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to keep reminding myself of how straightforward this one is. And I'm thinking I can probably put this here. How many tiles is that? Nine. In that case... Let's get a 3B and copy it like this. And regular belt input. Let me just line up our output station first. It's 
So that's going to go here. Therefore, input can be like this. Output like this. Fantastic. And I'm realizing we just barely have enough room for what I have in mind. Wait, no. We don't need belt. We don't need output belt on this side. Wait. I didn't even realize I combined all of these here. How much throughput is it? It's only 14 per second in and out. So these two are already good to go. And this goes here. And... Not like so. And I could just... I think it would be a little bit neater if I bring it over this way. That's the wrong one. Request a station, that's the wrong one. There we go. And... You know, I might do the same thing with the input. Kind of tidy. Yeah, I kind of like that. Don't really need this. Uh, and we're going to need fluid, of course. Which, uh, that's the only thing that is actually fast. Kind of fast, anyway. Um, we'd need a train every 60 seconds, or a little bit less. So I kind of want to have a nice... inside drop-off for the fluid, but that makes the... That makes the solid one all tricky. No, I think it is important that this uh, outputs quickly. I could do it like this. Just two pumps should be enough. That's definitely enough. I could even... We don't need that many tanks. 200k is more than enough storage, I think. For the local drop-off. Hmm. Kinda has to be there. Now where's our fluid input go? Uh, three, four, let's make it five. And then... Same thing over here. Three, four, unfortunate. I knew this day would come. Um, and we should probably have these two able to balance each other. Probably fine. Mm. 
gonna put this over here actually. And what did we need? Force field data. Guess I didn't even need to check. That was easy. Now I'll put in some tier 3 modules. Let's remove all the extra plating. And put a little bit back because it looks weird. I don't mind that on the right side. That's better. Seems good. Hmm. What the? There's a hole in the plating. Dear Liza, dear Liza. I kind of wanted to do something like this anyway. That seems fine. Alright, um, I forgot I wanted to build something on the right side as well. We're, we're going to be needing not the space probe rockets, I mean we will be needing those, but I want to do the star probes specifically in the same place. And maybe we'll do this. If it only takes up, like, this much space, maybe we'll do the space probe rockets down here as well. So it's literally just one machine that we need. Um, I think I can do a clever LTN drop-off slash pickup with this. Let's go space manufacturing. Rube. I think they're all going to be like this. Yeah, I think I remember having like basically identical builds for these three, but with different uh, inputs last time. Cool, cool, cool. That's fine. Maybe I could do all three in the same place, actually. Hmm, that would be an awful lot of stuff to drop off. They've got rocket control unit, rocket fuel, blank data card in common. Uh, lasers, nanomaterial, uranium fuel cell, heat shielding, flat solars 1 and 2, holmium solenoid, Aeroframe bulkhead. Different. So like 10 things to drop off. We'd have to use bots. Or it would be preferable to use bots. But I think I like the idea better. 
Um, we can get all of these things from a short train. bulk rail unloader is not the way to go for this. Or at least not if we're going to have the same station both as pickup and drop off. Then again that hardly makes it easier to do it that way. Could we have a bulk rail loader bit over here? Maybe? Where's the loaders? Wherefore art thou... Bulk rail loader. It's got like two tiles here. And one tile here. But other than that, we, we could do it. Also, if I really want to, I could push this over one tile. Um, so they would be one tile apart each time. It would just look a little bit weird when the train comes to pick it up. Alternatively, I could have the, like, pickup station down here somewhere. Uh, I think I'll just... Put this where it usually goes. Or what if I put it over here? Does it... No. So both of them are in positions where it'll show the... Like, low-level rail. I'll just do a superior long like that. Alright, alright, alright. So we are requesting six different items. Which means there's not a lot of room for excess inputs. But I'm pretty sure this build is going to be able to make star probes way faster than we need, regardless. Even with the train not necessarily... Dropping off resources as fast. Let's see. Probably separate these two. Oh. Signals don't. The train doesn't fit. Well, that's not great. How about if I do it like this? Not like that. More like this. I don't see that as fitting too conveniently. I guess we could do it this way. I don't love the look of that either. What did we do with these builds? Kind of exactly that, only with more of a nice curve. Uh, 
work. Can I even make that work? With the big machine? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's like one tile between. Oh, wait, no. Wait, what build was this? There is a huge... Oh, I see. What about down here? I thought that was the same, only... different. Okay, this one's a little bit tighter. That's fine, I guess. Just bring this down two tiles. Still looks pretty neat and tidy. Seems good. So what we're going to request is, let's see, 320 over 6. I request like 52 stacks of each. Oh, but it goes through solid rocket fuel so much faster than anything else stack 833 blank data cards per second <laughs> okay um yeah i think you have to put in as many blank data cards as you get actual data cards out so one star probe does equal a thousand blank data cards uh, a thousand data cards. Um, but that kind of makes it a little bit trickier with our single-use train stop. What if... If I used a double to drop off, would we have balance problems? Probably. Actually, the inserters should take turns. No, but they're going to be putting in different resources at different times. So they're not going to take turns for blank data cards, for example. Uh, I guess I could do, like, filters for all of these. That's six filters on each side, though. I can barely fit those. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Didn't I already do this? I think I did. For one of our other builds. Something very similar, yes. That actually looks pretty cool. So this was one, two tiles down from this thing. Yeah. I should... I should copy this. Well. Glad I didn't redesign the entire thing from scratch. Or noticing that. Don't necessarily need a junk data output for this one. That could probably go up there. Star probe. There we go. So one, two, three, four... Uh, the only problem is... Well, it's not actually a problem, because we don't need a fluid input. So we can go input number six like that. And I'm sure a single efficiency module will be just fine. Uh, 
Going to build another data card block, always and forever. Okay. Don't need fluids here, don't need whatever this is. Uh, don't need to filter our output from this. Much easier this time. Just need to set the right requests and filters. All right. Whatever you do, don't make blank data cards the middle one. Which resource is slowest to be consumed here? Solar panels? Let's put flat solars tier two here. And come to think of it, um, I'm going to have to go to some trouble for good test input. So we're going to go flat solar panel, less than, I don't know, 12. Uh, Holmium solenoid. Rocket, rocket. Uh, solid rocket fuel is where. Here we go. Heat shield and blank data card. Blank data card. And then same, same, but different. I'm going to mirror it because this one's going to be flat solar panels. Did I not say whitelist? Oh, no. Yeah, just blacklist nothing. That's fine. No, why did I... It's fine. It's fine. Okay. I just need to click all of these onto blacklist. And then this will be blanks. Uh, heat shielding. Rocket. Rocket and solenoid. And copy paste flip. There's our test input to, uh, stuff. All right, all right, all right. Let's do rocket control units over here. No particular order, I just want to be able to see them. Rocket con... Wait, let's do the things that are common to everything. Make those visible. I like that. All three don't use solar panels though. Solid rocket fuel, rocket control unit, blank data card is actually all the common ones. It's not like we need a belt. We, we actually can't keep up with um, the blank data cards without deep space belts. But yeah, it's not like it makes a difference with throughput or anything. Alright, how about rocket control unit, that's satellite telemetry. Uh, 
a solid rocket fuel. And blank data card. I'm just going to put that here regardless. And then the other three in this case are holmium solenoid, flat solar panel. And heat shield. Now that should consume with perfect balance. In any case, uh, we definitely have room to do more than 1.01 trainloads of each resource. Should be fine. Let's go 1.5. Don't need any fluid. Uh, Holmium solenoid. Actually, let's do the common ones first. Uh, rocket control unit. Ten hundred is one train load. Let's do one point five K. Solid rocket fuel is gonna be the same. And then blank data card seven thousand five hundred. And And then we've got heat shield, solenoid. And solar panel. So 30, 100. Should be 1.5 train loads. Long trains only for drop off, 1.5 train loads for each resource. And that's it. And we'll allow up to one cargo wagon to be accumulated here. Whoops. Alright, so that's going to be our build for the solar version. We're going to copy-paste edit it for the other two. Probe. Star probe. And we need... Standard pickup station for this. Actually, I think I'll... Make a little exception and put the constant combinator over here. Short trains only. Ride stack threshold 50 and Wodunski. It would have exactly the same effect to use provide threshold there. Uh, let's remove the excess plating. Uh, Perhaps including our test inputs. We can pretty clearly see that works. Or hear it, even if I don't look at it. Let's put this here. And this here. And maybe a little bit of extra tile here. That kind of looks neat. And then I actually am going to put this here. So it follows the usual pattern. Cool. And then we need to build probes. Um, can we make those in one of these? We can. Five inputs, one output. Very straightforward. We're going to do the same thing again. Let's 
So a requester down here this time. I do want to steal this exact shape again. Wait, what's with this snap to? Oh, I see. I see, I see, I see. So this goes here. Probably help if we had some plating. Can I borrow this plating, please? Oh, there's a little little holes in it. Um, just give me the rail and the plating the moment. And I think that goes there. Yes, it does. Fantastic. Oh. And then copy paste flip for the belts. Don't really need to flip it. Give me the module as well. And this one's gonna be probe. So what goes into this? Aeroframe scaffold, cargo rocket section, holmium solenoid, iridium plate, solid rocket fuel. It should be about as good as anywhere to put this here. Cargo rocket section. Oh man, I thought we were free of these. Well, at least we have something to do with the six million of them we've got lying around. And then... Something like this. I mean, like this. And that's going to be uh, probes. Oops. Short wagons only. Uh, so what do we need? Five inputs. One, two, three, four, five. That should be fine. Kind of like the look of it better if we eat that. So what have we got? Holmium solenoid. Aeroframe scaffold. Cargo rocket section. Let's hide it here so we pretend that we don't have to deal with it anymore. Solid rocket fuel. And iridium plate. If it was four inputs, I could do this much more easily. Unless... Let's do some test input just to be... You know what? I'm, I'm confident enough that this will work correctly. Oh, 
We only need the space probe rockets as fast as we need probes, right? But probes of all types. Still, a single probe here represents, uh, sort of represents a thousand data cards. So I don't think we have to worry too much about the speed of this. Regardless, we can easily speed it up if necessary. Cool. We just need to do the request to station. I did put a name on this, right? Oh, I didn't. Let's just go with everything requester. To make star probe. And the same thing down here. Except we are making a regular probe. Space probe rocket. Where can we make those? It, there's no universe where it's better to do this on the ground, is there? Oh. Oh, oh, oh. I remember figuring out the, figuring this out late last time. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can use prod modules to make the probes. It might... Uh, I was... The only thing I was checking for as well is... It might even be more stack efficient. In fact, it's definitely more stack efficient to bring them up the space elevator. But yeah, there it is. Uh, we can... We can use prod modules with this. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so that build was a waste of time. Uh, but I guess I could... Do one of our other uh, star probe builds here. Do we have like a quarter block available in Astro somewhere? Yeah, this is perfect. We'll put the uh, whichever one it is that we send to the asteroid belt. Wait, that's not what I meant to say and I answered my question. Um, I'm pretty sure the Astro one is Asteroid Belt. Yes, indeed. Let's check that our spaceships have been working. It looks like they have. Yeah, it, it looks like everything's working just fine. In fact, it might be a lot more consistent now. Well, let's discount copper, because it's not on that network. Oh, wow. Consumption of core fragments. Looking pretty consistent. By far the worst one is stone, and that, even that never stops. I think our spaceship system is working. Look at those lovely flat lines over the last hour. Grats, thank you. There's still that issue that I fully expect to appear where occasionally, if it's frame perfect, um, there's only one ship waiting here? No, there's a few, I think. There's actually quite a few. Are any of them busted? I actually doubt it at this moment. Number one is waiting to drop off. Number 13 is waiting to drop off. 16 looks good. This one's already down here. This is the first one we looked at, I think. It's waiting to drop off. It 
looking good. Now, there might be by now... Again, it's going to be very rare. I think it's literally got to be frame perfect. But we might have some spaceships that are getting stuck at Foenestra. Are these ones moving? Yes, 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 yes. No. Okay. Any more? Okay. Okay. Okay, so there's two so far. I don't know if both of those are new with that problem. Where they launched without something on the memory cell, and they just happened to have a destination that included Foe and Estra. So they end up stuck here because they don't redirect. But at least it's rare and we know why it happens. It's going to be hard figuring out how to build around it with the circuits, but it's not impossible. Um, but yeah, our throughput is now excellent. Uh, and we still have... I need to remember to send construction bots to... To our outposts. I kind of need to do it manually. They'll never need to be. They'll never need to be resupplied. But if I try to set it up so that we do it automatically, the amount of stuff that I have to add doesn't work out so well. Uh, and we've got like. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 outposts. That's not so bad, especially considering it takes, like, less than 10 minutes to get to each of them. And that's if we had to go to all of them via Foenestra, not having a bunch of them next to each other. I guess I could get started with that right now. Give me a whole lot of construction bots. How many have I got here? 203. I really only need one for each outpost, but I'd like to leave like 50. Just to be sure. It's literally just a number, like a variable, as far as like the UPS is concerned. As they're sitting there doing nothing, almost always. Where can I pick up more bots? Here we go. Oh, that's quite a few. Yeah, that'll do. Alright, first stop is Granus. While that's happening, back to the editor. Yeah, so we're not going to make our probes in space. Everything that goes into the probes is conveniently located on the ground. We get productivity bonuses, um, which can only be done on the ground. And for one, uh, lastly, we're sending up more than a stack of iridium plate, although that'll be in ingot form, so that's not that bad. Um, five stacks of solid rocket fuel. 10 stacks of cargo rocket section, if we don't pack them, in which case it would be 2 stacks. Uh, two, th uh, 2 fifths of a stack of aeroframe scaffold, and a tenth of a stack of holmium solenoid. Or we can just do it all on the ground and send up 100 space probe rockets in one train. I don't think we'll ever need more than one train to move that stuff. Probably not. Okay, so we're definitely not doing space probes. 
um, with this. And I think I'll do the deep space one here. Uh, interstellar Void Probe. And I'll copy paste edit our belts here so that the common stuff is already done. Uh, and then we need nano material. Which way would that be? Yeah. These ones are all the common stuff. Okay. Nano material. Uh, let me do it this way, actually. Uranium fuel cell. It's actually got that in common with the other one. And laser turret. How many laser turrets do we need? And I could just have the mole produce enough laser turrets to trigger deliveries by LTN, maybe. Alternatively, what goes into a laser turret? Um, laser turret. That's a lot. Yeah, I don't really want to drop off six more types of item uh, at this drop off. Okay. And again, well, we've got six types of item. We need to do the requests. And this is going to be interstellar void probe data, or rather interstellar void probe. So these three are all correct already. Then we need nano material, which is also 7.5k. Uh, uranium fuel cell and laser turret. They're all the same stack size. Laser turret. Easy enough. To Stella Void Probe. Fantastic. All right, let's uh, make this thing reality. Um, I'm just going to do that for now. Don't necessarily want to make a specific blueprint for all three of those. Where am I? Rannis. Let me just quickly drop off these robots. What are you doing? No, don't bring him to me. No. What do we pick up? Destroyed bots. I did put some logic in here. Did I not? That's weird. I thought I remembered setting things up so that we wait until there's a whole stack of uh, destroyed space train power packs before we put them back in the ship. But I think I may have forgotten about it. Because this is where we set requests for the ship. Or rather, I would put it on the memory cell so it only applies to one... Uh, one container. Well, that's another patch I need to introduce.
What's happened to the bots on the Granis outpost? I think the ships must have kidnapped some bots and we ended up with extra over here. And... Uh, I'm going to need filtered chests for this. Okay, I need to be careful. Um, put it here. I don't actually have a chest. This was supposed to take two seconds so I can get back to the other thing without forgetting what I was doing. Uh, here we go. We're just going to do a filtered chest for destroyed bots. Which we would hope would not be here in the first place. But what are you going to do? If I don't filter it, the bots are going to fill it with Vulcanite core fragments. Um... Yeah. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Which is going to be... Exorion? That brings back memories. That's the length of a typical SE playthrough. Oh, I remember this place. And back to our editor for now. Didn't I make a blueprint down here? Yes. Alright. Back to space. And... I haven't actually placed this one yet, have I? Did I even make a blueprint yet for... for that last data card? I don't think so. Where even did I put... oh, here it is. Yeah, alright then, let's do this properly. Blueprint. And we're doing... Uh, I believe it's fusion test data. And two probes. Test plus probes. Let's remove the cheat items. That seems fine. So that goes here. And um, let's put it about here, perhaps. Why not? Or I could put it here. But then we're not keeping all the tier 4 stuff kind of together. Alright, scaffolding train. On a gate. Much schnell bitte. And... I think we've already got more... A lot more particle <laughs> colliders than we need. Um, how many were in that build again? I think it was 12. Yeah, 12. And then we can bring back some of these other things. If we see if we have room for all of those. Are we full? 
we are full. Very much so. Uh, maybe not that full. Let's drop plating. Oh, we're actually missing efficiency modules. Fantastic. Breckman, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Much appreciated. And a welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, let's inactivity over here. Did we get all the floor placed? Not quite. In that case... Uh, please just wait here indefinitely for now. Alright, we are anchoring... We got... We've got some construction bots, but they don't have anywhere to put the destroyed bots. Theoretically, this should never happen at the actual outpost. But here we are. Back we go. When's our next, uh, next CME? It's headed for Cap Capritos. Never heard of it. Next up is Moss Garden. Hype, indeed. Much appreciated. Oh, I think the construction train is doing its thing right now. Yep. And Scaffoldy is just arriving. So is that all the scaffolding? Looks like it. Should be able to just left click this. Fantastic. And why don't you go over here actually? See if you can finish that whole thing and what what the, where are you no okay okay see if we can finish this build in one go oh there's our rocket fuel fantastic nice that was easy Oh, this doesn't have the recipe because we haven't unlocked it yet. Let's put a tag here before we forget that we wanted this to be interstellar probe data. And this one is uh, star probe. I, I meant to say interstellar probe, obviously. And this one right here is called fusion test data. Did I name that blueprint properly? I think I did, yes. I think I remember fusion test data getting consumed by other stuff as well. Did I not activate this? Oh, I didn't. Whoopsie daisy. What was our other input? Force field data. test data. And 
damage. There's only one solid. Force field. And that's it. Here it comes. Fantastic. How many laser turrets do we have up here? Certainly not 7,500. Um, but that can be arranged. It's not like we can prod module laser turrets. Okay. We are at Moss Garden orbit. I could land down here, it's just that I don't want the robo networks to touch. Is plenty of box. Nothing left on the ground. No, we're good. Next up is Gibbil. And away we go. And I guess I should go and do a copy-paste edit and build uh, the Asteroid Belt version of this already. Ooh, we're on, we've almost got our probes already. Why don't we have rocket control units? Um, probably because I've not actually brought them up the space elevator. That's a pretty good reason. You know what I should have checked? That we can't make these on the ground. Yeah, we can't. Pretty sure I remember from last time. But yeah, we don't actually have... Uh... Control unit. In space. So we're going to have to make a train for that. I'm not too worried about it right now. What's all this then? Oh no. The classic error. Uh, how many trains have we got? We've got two with too much proton stream. Um, I could just... Where else are we dropping off proton stream? That is a drop-off with lots of space. Okay, so this is subatomic data. It's just over here. Go empty there. And see if we've got room to do the exact same thing. Wait, what did... Wait, no. With this guy. How fast do we go through it here? 408. That's not that bad. 100k storage should be fine. Oh, I shouldn't ask for 100k if we've only got exactly 100k storage. Otherwise, it's all good. Fantastic. And did they get to drop it all off? Oh, LTN doesn't know that they're coming. Um, Alright, in that case... Wait, what? If it's not receiving a signal... It is receiving a signal. Oh, it needs to be greater then. For the moment. 
So it did talk to the station, but it didn't come with a negative because it wasn't sent with an LTN schedule. And that's it. Good enough. There's really no need for such a big storage here. They just fit together well. Lucky we had it. Alright. Time for Gibbel. Not sure how close I can go. Yeah, that's barely safe. And we have zero construction bots this time. Theoretically, we should never need them. Where are we going to next? It is verb T. We could have told you that without looking. So many ships. So beautiful. So the problem with the update that I need to do for passing the data onto the ships is I can't check if the data is already on the ship. Um, Midak, thank you very much for the Prime sub as well. Much appreciated. And welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Then again, I don't really need to know... If there's already data on the ship, I just need to reset it and replace it. But the trouble is... All, all other things that I can account for aside, the trouble is the small possibility after I patch this that those two signals arrive at exactly the same tick. To get passed onto the memory cell. No matter what kind of timing I give it, well, I guess it's possible to check. I can determine the exact tick that the ship arrived, and I can determine the exact tick that this signal arrived. And I could do some kind of thing where they, like, meet in the middle, and if some signal is some value, then we know that both of them arrived at the same time, therefore only output from this one. I don't know. It's going to be a whole spaghetti mess of combinators, because that's not what this is. This is um, perfectly organized, as all combinators should be. I mean, to be honest, like, setting things in, uh, separating things into, like, the combinator equivalent of functions, kind of, like little logical blocks where we know what these things do, uh, it's about the best you can do. Like, I, 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 believe it or not, I did my best to make this readable. This is a memory cell that remembers the first thing it's told until it's reset. These right here tell us if the ship just arrived or just left. This does something with that. This is just sending unconditionally a request for uranium fuel cells onto the ship if it has water detected, so it wouldn't do it for the antimatter ships later on. This is resetting the local memory cell after the ship leaves.
where are we? Let's anchor. Say hello to Verbti. Don't get hit by a train. Give it exactly 50 bots for each. And onward to... I would say Muir, but that's not using the same network. Because I am forever putting this off. It's 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 kind of like a prototype. A little bit. Oh, this is where I designed that stuff. I think. Somewhere around here there is probably... A bit of circuit logic to say... Only when we've got one stack of destroyed space train power packs. Make a request for them. Can't see it anywhere though. Okay. That's going to be a pain to update actually. Oh well. Are we leaving? Yeah, I didn't pick a destination. Achilles is eventually going to be our ultimate barrel planet. Need to clear an awful lot of biters first. Speaking of biters, Nalvis might be clear of them, probably not. Let's see, the energy beams are still doing work. But I couldn't see any more spawners. We are almost at safe Nalvis. Very cool. Uh, so where are we going next? Probably somewhere where we don't have to go via Foenestra. Um, I still haven't gone to Hermes. What was it, Hermes? I think it, I think it was Hermes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a reason I have this scanned. Talk to the spider boy. Brontion. Brontion Burbulator. He's got an awful lot of missiles. Let's not upset him. Um, but yeah, let's go to Plato next. Plato Orbit. And we're off. Alright, let's jump into our editor, and I think I just have to, like... I did make a blueprint of this, right? Here it is. Alright, let's trim this away. hacks good to see you again hope you're doing well thank you so much Veldak and for these 17 months thank you very very much and uh, I would say welcome but I know you've been here all stream I'll say it anyway welcome welcome much appreciated Veldak thank you right so this is gonna be uh, which asteroid belt probe? Whoa. And we're gonna need... Um, so these three are already correct. The ones we can see the belts. And we need aeroframe bulkhead. Uh... Flat solar panel one. And uranium fuel cell. All 
No, no, thank you for the entertainment. Uh oh. Appreciate it. Um. Asteroid? Yes, there we go. Asteroid probe pickup. And the only thing that changes here is Basto. And the only thing that changes here is the last three. We're going to need the same number for flat solar panel mark one. This is 50, and this is 50. Aeroframe bulkhead. And uranium fuel cell. I still haven't played around with fusion, actually. I haven't had energy problems for a long time. Okay. So I believe that's our... That's our little corner... Build? Snap to grid... Uh, wait, we don't need to snap to grid. Tiles, train stop names, uh, we can probably remove all that. I can't actually click it. Wait, wait, yeah. Oh, I see. Wait, no I don't. Whatever, this will work. Let's just take that, put it down here, and... I had a spot in mind for this. It's right next to the telescope. Oh, um, that rail doesn't actually need to be... Wait, that's not... that's not right. <laughs> oh, no. Is this a problem? No, it is not. Okay. Scaffold train. If you please. This won't take long. And construction train should already have everything it needs. Oops. And left click. Fantastic. Noise. And we already have four trains on the way. Uh, no doubt everything except for rocket control unit and actually it's probably everything except for rocket control unit um i would have expected five trains to be on the way though what do we got uranium fuel cells uh solar panels rocket fuel oh there's five aeroframe bulkhead and blank data card. So as soon as we bring rocket control units into space, we'll have our asteroid belt probes well before we need them. Very good. 3 minutes 30 until we're at Plato orbit. Okay. So I think I've done everything for Energy 4, except, of course, for going and making an outpost at the sun. And to do that, I want to steal from my existing outposts, but without a space elevator without the train stops 
And obviously with uh, space probe launcher thingies. I'm color coding outputs from landing pads by science color where the belts go. Black is for shared things like fluids, more of blank parts. I'm guessing you mean deep space belt? Oh yeah. Oh boy, I do not miss having many, many small chests like last playthrough. Absolutely not. You know, I was thinking of doing a run-through with pure vanilla after this. Uh, to see what it's like again. And to take what I've learned back to the vanilla game. Um, but I'm sure I'm going to be crying tears as I miss out on uh, various quality of life things and stuff like loaders faster inserters beacons that are not awful beacons that don't encourage you to put eight beacons around oh no it's isn't it 12 beacons yeah 12 beacons around every single machine and then you can barely fit some belts Ionodon next oh no Oh god, 12 beacon builds, crying, indeed. Rain, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Ever considered doing 100 by 1? Not even once. Did a bot get caught in that last ship launch? It's possible. I do have systems in place to correct for that. That's... That's a lot of ships moving Vulcanite. And I am here for it. Absolutely. Oh, we're almost at Plato. 1 minute 30. Well, add 50% real time because we're down to 40 UPS for now. It's going to go up a bit when we can drastically... Reduce our spaceship population. Uh, it also goes up a bit when we replace something like... Let's see. Where's an old build that we haven't replaced yet? Um, here's some okay examples. Here we go. Something like this. Um, rough data storage substrates. We've got... 96 machines here, which give us only 31.68 rough data storage substrates per second. Whereas if we use higher tier machines, and let's say we use our prod sixes, with tier 6 uh, beacon. Is that tier 6? Yeah. Let's get some power. Uh, it looks like it would take... What was our rate again? We had 96 machines here for 31.68 per second. If we make a new version, uh, we could do 12 machines to do about the same thing. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit more UPS efficient. Just, just a tad. Multiply that sort of thing out through most of the base. We can definitely recover a bit more UPS. I realized warehouses might be fine after I built this ship. Small chests are mostly fine in SE, but for ships, I definitely want big ones. Fair enough. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, I never use belts and inserters on ships, or at least not insofar as I can avoid it. Those thermo thingamajigs, uh, what are they called again? The power plants. Ice, uh, fluid isothermic generators. If you just burn antimatter with those, they really simplify the ship design. Um... Let's get some bots over here. And if we've already got some... Make sure there's exactly 50 because OCD. There we go. Let me in. Next is... Horsehole, and then Stromhurst. Then I think there might be things in Hankerus. Nope, nothing we're using in Hankerus. That is a big Holmanite planet. But it's pretty far from the interstellar map. So how many ships do we now have stuck at Foenestra? Looks like zero? Mm, maybe one. It seems to be trying to move, but it's out of power. That's not what I was worried about. Uh, this is what I was worried about. Alright, so our attrition rate with that bug is... Not zero. But I, I don't think I'm going to come up with a good solution to it. As foggy as my brain is today. I'll have a, most of a week to think about it before the next Factorio stream. Alright, what's our ETA? 35 seconds. What can I do with 35 seconds? Check on our core fragments. Oh, look at those flat lines. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so consistent. Uh, production, I guess, would be flatter, right? Copper ore, I'm not as worried about copper ore, it's not part of this, uh, spaceship network that we're tweaking. Ore fragment imasite cave just shot up, and down and up and down. That's kind of weird. The others are looking very consistent. Um... It looks like Immersite Cave is just very wavy, or oh, very spiky, um, which might mean that we've caught up with it. Ooh. Oh, that's good. That's a good sight. Mmm. Delicious. Yep. We have indeed caught up with it. I'm surprised for how long our resources have been going well, we still haven't got that last 2% of advanced roboports. Let me have a look at this real quick. Uh, what are we missing? Energy 3. I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, energy 3... I think I already checked that we have... We already have the catalogs. We're still waiting on... We've got the quantum processors. Oh, that's for tier 4. We're actually... It's Holmium. How can it still be Holmium? Okay, I know Holmium gets consumed a lot. But... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What is going on here? Uh, 
Are we out of trains? Are they all stuck somehow? Oh my god. See, that's what I wanted to look up earlier. When it said a train came back to the depot with items. It's always iron plate, I think, as well. Where the heck are these LTN trains picking up less than one stack of iron plate in one cargo wagon? So is that it? Is is that why we don't have as much holmium as we should? And now it's gonna cascade. Get all these trains moving. I wish I could see the stats on how many multi-end trains we've got available right now, but a casual look around says not that many, but it's not that bad. As long as we have... Well, I was going to say as long as we have trains idle in the depot for any amount of time, we're looking good, but no, I think we are actually... That's kind of a milestone, honestly. Needing more LTN trains again. Even if it is because a few of them are, like, backed up over here because something got stuck. LTN manager? Yeah, I've tried it, but it, like, crashed my game. I really don't want to do anything risky like that for the stream playthrough. Skelgard, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So... Where on earth... Would an LTN scheduled train... Be picking up iron plates as it goes about its business doing something else? That is actually an extremely difficult question. Okay, first of all, where can we even pick up iron plate from? I'm going to look at the... Well, the bulk rail loaders shouldn't ever be the problem. Right? Where would we even have inserters sticking out or something? It has to be somewhere where a train stops, like, waiting at a... Uh, uh, th this is going by what what we found was the problem where we kept getting, like, exactly 48 advanced circuits in the third cargo wagon of random LTN trains last playthrough. I, I, I strongly suspect it's the same problem again. But... It would be something like one of the inserters wasn't configured to only swing if a train was there and uh, the train would be like trying to leave and there was traffic and one of the cargo wagons was still sticking in front of the inserter. But I can't think where that would even be a possibility. The last patch on LTN Manager was uh, just implemented something without testing. It simply crashes. Oh no. Oh no. That's unfortunate. Yeah, where would I even... Where would they even get Iron Plate from? that isn't using a bulk rail unloader. And if they were using a... If they were getting it from a bulk rail unloader by accident somehow, I would expect significantly more than... a bit under one stack. It's not going to help us if we notice the notification that says a train came back to the LTN depot with items in it. Because we're not going to be able to trace it back. Um, I'm pretty sure... Well, let's follow an LTN train real quick. 
I want to see it go back to the depot. But I'm pretty sure we'd have to be lightning fast, if we're lucky, to be able to see what its schedule was after it gets to the depot. I think we have like five seconds, actually, before this gets deleted. Nope. Zero. So that would be the point at which it says a train came back with items to the depot. So that's that's useless. We can't figure out anything from that. Uh, we only know that it happened. Hmm. Hmm. What am I going to look through every iron container on the planet? Possibly. Didn't I say what can I do with 30 seconds a minute ago? Is this the so-called 30 second rabbit hole? It's not going to be at an unloader. And I don't think it's going to be at a storage chest. Where on Earth? Or where on Hagen? Could trains be getting random iron plate? It's so strange. That's where the LTN manager could help if it worked. Oh no. Did I already do this? Uh, that's a no. We've got one construction bot. And is that, is that holding on to a vulcanite core fragment? Um, that's a little strange. How about this? There we go. Give it back. Oh, and while I'm here, we can at least update one of these to have an umbrella. I keep forgetting. We get such a we get such a long time uh, to react to energy beams anyway. We've got several hours. All right, who's next? Stromhurst? There's also a train log mod that keeps track of what train carried cargo between which stations. Nice. That would probably help a lot, yes. Is this it? Did I find it by accident? Just zooming in on something randomly? I think this is it. I think this is why. Okay. Decon train. I choose you. Wait for inactive. I think some of these just landed on the belt when this overflowed. That's all there is to it. Wait, no. Wasn't this only here because I took it out of the train that was stuck here? Maybe it was something like this, though, that caused it in the first place. Solevix. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. That's from the stuck train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nagaskin, welcome in also. Or you subconsciously knew something was wrong there from past actions. Yeah. Uh, it, it could be something like that that was the cause as well. We could be chasing a problem that's not actually reoccurring. Hmm. 
Maybe. And Solovix, hi. Hi to you. Well, uh, thank you very much again for the two months of Prime. Much appreciated. And welcome back. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What are we short on? Rare metals. Oh, they're being dropped off right now. But still, if it came to this, we're short on rare metals. I believe we do have a rare metal core fragment planet. Yeah, right here. I think we'll go to Hyperion for that. 7% bite of threat, 6k radius. That's decent. I did have my doubts that we would ever need uh, rare metal core fragments, but we might be getting to a shifting point for that. Uh, did I already do Stromhurst orbit? I did not. Okay. Anchor. And 50 bots. And 50 bots. No kill like overkill. Wait a sec. I'm just now realizing I should have been putting one of these containers on each side. Well, hopefully it'll never be relevant. Theoretically it should never have been rele relevant in the first place, but here we are. And next, uh, I think we're done for this solar system. I was going to go to Hermes for uranium eventually. But I don't think we're having any problems with uranium. Oh, I stand corrected. I stand very corrected. Do we have more uranium? Someone did mention it earlier, but I got distracted. Uh, let's search for Entity Uranium. We've got 24k here, 4.4... 4. Here's 425,000, not too far away from Rail. I think all of our Uranium mines are empty. Yeah. Oh, and hey! It's literally completely empty. Oh. Um, Oh, never mind. This thing didn't actually work. Oh, I had to update this. I think I did update it. Yeah, you can see the constant combinator there. Uh, basically, if there's nothing left to mine, we give it like negative 99. Provide stack threshold so that we only need one stack to trigger a delivery here. What I tried the first time was just have a provide threshold of one, as well as the provide stack threshold. Uh, for some reason that doesn't work. I don't know why. But suffice to say, we'll need to do this part manually this time. There's 434k uranium over there as well. How's this one looking? Completely empty. Fantastic. Um, where was that uranium? Here it is. Let's get a lazy mine. A really lazy mine. I'm not bothered enough while I'm not on planet um, to replace that with uh, tier 6 prods. I'm also just not that as concerned about uranium. Let's connect that like so. 
Alright, first of all, did I finish this yet? 50 and 50. Yes, where, where are we flying to? Too many squirrels. Do we have anything in Asimius? We do not. Orchard was one of our better planets last time. And I don't think there's anything in Basilius. Okay. So we need to start going to the outposts that are Viafo and Estra. Uh, this is all Calidus. This is all Calmea. So it's just these three. Uh, Spiriso Orbit, Toucan Orbit, and Bombato Orbit. Regardless, our destination first is Foenestra. Just double check, we've got plenty of fuel. Holy crap. Uh, that is not plenty of fuel. Let's, let's go back to Hagen Orbit first. Okay. 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 Yeah, I kind of overestimated my fuel supply there. Hopefully we make it back. One of the networks should have enough construction coverage for both sides. That's a good point. And then maybe I shouldn't have dropped... Maybe I shouldn't have dropped construction bots on the left side. That being the case. Alright, let's get this chore over with. Um, we'll do the rail like so. And like so. And like so. And we're already on a one-way rail. That actually makes it really easy. I'll borrow this thing. Nice. Yeah, there we go. And we'll grab our construction train, bring it over this way, and await further instructions. The construction bot shouldn't pick up things if there isn't any storage space. They do, though, and then they just hover. It's a little bit unfortunate sometimes. I'm also going to need a uh, acid drop-off. I'll just copy-paste one for this. And that almost fits perfectly. What a shame. about here then yeah no, just just put it back here one two where's our train get over here Oh, don't forget power poles. And... This might be easier. to need help as well.
Uh oh. Now this. Is it the beam? It is not the beam. It's meteors. Okay. Now where were we? I should really go and get a four fragment build set up for uranium fuels, uh, for uranium. I'm very much over building temporary mines. I'm thinking if I play vanilla again, I should make just super duper rich resource patches. Just so I don't have to update them very often. And over here, please. Wait for inactivity. Oops. That might work, actually. Don't actually need this here. It's kind of expensive, actually. Oh, uh, and don't need a second beacon either. That's a, actually a bit of a problem. There we go. That should work. And why don't we have a short train trying to bring sulfuric acid yet? Short train 51k, are we out of sulfuric acid? Certainly not. Okay. Even if it can't path or if there's traffic, it should have scheduled the uh, delivery already. Do we not have short fluid wagons available? We do not. Well, there's your problem. Why is a shorty moving the crude oil? Probably because I allowed it. Where is the crude oil pickup from here? Long trains only, please. Two minutes thirty till Hagen orbit. Our fuel should be fine. Alright, well, I guess we'll just... Have a little faith that that will work. Why are we not leaving? Oh, is it because of signals? No? Maybe. It might be traffic. Okay, can, can we move this way? Yes, we can. Oops. Oh, no. Okay. This is your stop. Wait for inactivity. I can't remember if there were other conditions here. Uh, and it does seem to be moving. Fantastic. And these floaty bots aren't going to go back until the train goes back. And then they're going to take like 10 minutes to float back. And then we're going to reset the train's contents all over again. And, of course, now is when I notice... Um, ...that I missed some pipe. Too many beacons, indeed. To beam or not to beam? To beam. Definitely to beam. There's our sulfuric acid, though. Um, let's get our construction train back there before it... Never mind. Too late. Too late. Uh, 
Well, as soon as it gets some pipe in here, I'll send it. Hurry up. Oh my god. Okay, that's... Why do I have a hundred yellow inserters at this stage? No, I don't think we're ever using these again. Cool. Let's go before the bots get back, and that way it won't reset the... the train's items until... After we build those pipes. Alright, that should sort itself out. 15 seconds till we're at Hagen Orbit. Fantastic. For Chen, welcome in if I didn't say so. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. And we're here. Okay. I already know the answer. I was about to say, why have we not got uh, the last 2% of advanced robo-ports? It's Holmium. It's always Holmium. And it's literally just... Holmium plate directly into making energy signs. I guess I could prioritize it. Where is all the rest of the Holmium going, though? Did we fix it, by the way? Holmium ingot. I think the answer is no. Uh, there's been a bit of activity over the last 10 minutes. That's not terribly encouraging. These guys are still stuck here. So Holmium core fragments are completely backed up. Uh, we're probably deleting... Oh god, there's so many... Oh, holy crap. Uh... That's a lot of trains. The, the, the train that's supposed to pick up the excess Holmium can't leave. It can't get in. Because there's too much traffic. Okay, I think I should probably have, like, train limit one on these things. At least at the drop-off. Now, how do I... How do I fix this with the softest touch possible? Where's our train? Oh, it's way back here. It's moving again. It must be moving a different resource. We've got excess coal. That's good to know. That's very good to know. Um, I think, I think I literally just send these guys away for a moment. Until this train can get up here. It's not even moving. Oh, yes he is. We just clear a path. And it involves moving this guy out of the way. Oh, you're the one I was already trying to move. Okay. And... Where are you going? Crude oil drop-off. It's the same as last time. These guys get blocked by these guys, and then they block more... 
trains. So where's our trash pickup train? Right about here. Okay, could you please skedaddle? And we move forward once more. And here we go. Finally. So now we start crushing the excess holmium. Um, come to think of it, we need an LTN train stop limit, don't we? Limit trains one. And this train limit wasn't actually accomplishing anything. I think that's the first time I've put a LTN train limit on this playthrough. Does he have plus? Oh, there's not enough in here to trigger it yet, right? No, there is. There it is. If you can path to this one, it should sort itself out from here. There we go. Okay, where are we? We're back at base. Oh right, I needed fuel. So now we're going to Foenestra. And then we need to go visit our three outposts uh, that we get to via Foenestra. Is it a coincidence, or do we keep swapping fuel in here whenever I launch this thing? I think it's just a coincidence. Didn't Holmium traffic jam up yesterday too? Yes, it did. It shouldn't jam up again, uh, since I put a LTN train limit on this drop-off of one. Um, if we end up with way too much Holmanite, we're only going to bring it here one train load at a time. Or I could probably set it to like two. Um, as long as there's not enough trains here using the highways Tyranno slash stackers. Fantastic Tyranno goodness. Kellogg's, thank you so much for the nine months. Much appreciated. Oh my goodness. Oh my fantastic goodness. Oh fan good my tasticness. In any case, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And thank you so much again for the nine months. Three minutes forty-five till we're at Foenestra. Okay, so... Holmium. Uh, let's see all of these, please. No, not all of those. I want core fragments. Not production, actually. I want consumption of core fragments, if anything. Uh, that's probably fine. Regular Holmium, Crushed Holmium, uh, Holmium Ingot, Holmium Plate. Actually, that's just a function of ingots. Powder, Chloride. Uh, it all shot up two minutes ago. Alright then. Here comes the powder. Enjoying the chill streams? Keep it up. Nice, thank you. Why is Holmium such a problem? We've completely saturated the actual core fragments now. 
So apart from finding a fix for that one issue with our spaceship system, uh, I really do just need to ship the bottleneck around. We've got two blocks making holmium core fragments. So we can process 96 per second, uh, which would give us 100. Uh, 100 holmium per second. Uh, the block that processes that is capable of consuming 576 per second. I don't think we need to worry about expanding this one for a while. Um, so let's say we have 100, or 101. Uh, we're looking at like 75 crushed hormonite per second. And then two blocks of this can consume uh, only 95 per second. So it's actually going to bottleneck on this next. Theoretically. How much are we making for powder? 194 per second with two blocks. How much are we consuming? 153. So we'd have to build another one of these if we're building another one of these. And if this is going full speed, a thousand molten holmium per second would give us about 4.35 ingots per second. Or two... Wait, wait, wait. Oh yeah, no, that was right. About a thousand per second. Uh, 261 holmium ingots per minute. Which translates to ten times that for plate. I'm not actually sure how much the base needs. Oh. Wait, what? Oh. Oh, ingots are saturated over here right now. Hold on. Does this not... Are you not trying to... There's too much traffic? Oh no. We're not picking up Holmium ingots right now. Because we're literally just waiting for this guy to get out with traffic. I think it's time for the second space elevator. <laughs> they do not respect... Well, maybe they do respect right-of-way, but not in a way where they take turns. I agree, let's keep the stream up 24-7. I'm not capable of that. Um, yeah, this is getting pretty ridiculous. Look at this. This train has been trying to leave the station for like a minute, and it just doesn't move. And to be clear, it does have path. Oh my god. Thing is... The, the trains are always going to go to the nearest space elevator, right? Because it's, easy, it's got to use a vanilla schedule. Uh, to go up the space elevator. I can give them different space elevator names. So we can have trains using a specific space elevator. That might be necessary. Because... Otherwise... Like, if I put another space elevator here, let's assume we have room for it, which I don't think we do. Most of the trains are going to go for the one on the left. Well, the, the higher 
traffic stuff is. This guy still hasn't left the station. Oh my god. Take turns. What is wrong with you people? Let him out. This is horrifying. Why doesn't it at least path to like the edge of this if it's trying to leave? Hold on. Do we have train limit greater than zero here? Oh. Well, there's... But... Wait, what? Why is it train limit zero? Set train limit holmium ingot. Output holmium ingot input count. If we're greater than five... Oh, we've got exactly five... You... Absolute derp. I didn't read this one. Oh my god. It's fine. Everything's fine. Abracadabra take turns. You could do the signal trick to make them go to the other elevator, indeed. I can't believe I've done this. But hey, uh, Holmium ingots are looking better. Look, look at how many we've still got here. I have to pick up more than half a train load. Like, significantly more than half a train load. Up the elevator we go. And I've lost track of him already. Should be over here somewhere. Here we go. We did it. It is done. We have Holmium plate up here again. And we're taking it to the mall. Um, not surprising. How many train loads do we get per train load? 50 times 10, but the stack size is 100. Uh, it is times 10, right? So 10 of, 10 of these makes a stack, so we get 5 stack, 5 train loads per train load, basically. Which means we should get Holmium plate uh, over here soon? Well, over here soon, rather. There's probably quite a few things looking for it right now. I really need to upgrade this. Where's that blueprint that I did? Um, storage block mark three? No. I think it was in here. Vanilla to LTN. Yeah, here it is. Vanilla to LTN ingots. How difficult is that going to be to update? Also... Huh. So that bit of rail stays exactly where it is. It's more where the containers are that's, um... These containers don't actually move. Okay, that might be a lot easier to update than I realized. Especially for items that we're short on. I can just disallow drop-offs for a while. 
So basically, we're using this. We're using this. It's the in fact a bulk rail loader still. Uh, we're adding rail over here, and we're getting rid of this. So. I guess I'll switch this off, if I can ever click on it. There we go. Iron and copper are going to take a lot longer to drain, I think. Especially since we've got redundant... Well, not redundant, probably, when it comes to max throughput. Uh, but we've got some extra stations for them over here. Did I turn off the right ones? Oh, this is the pickup. That's the opposite of what I need to switch off. Um... Yeah, just don't give it a train limit. So the vanilla trains are not allowed to drop off here. Alright, so... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Switch these back on in case a train wants to take from them. Because that would only help. Is it impossible to swap tiles underneath buildings? I don't think it is. Make a copy of this. Remove everything but tiles. A little bit of hidden messed up tiles there. Somewhere. It's hidden behind the rail. And... What's with this? Oh no, I think I know what's going on here. Okay. Or do I? Whatever. That's a start. Let's bring the scaffolding train. You have thousands of energy pack ones in the bulk loader. Energy pack ones. Do you mean these? Yep, sure do. I think we've got enough to make all the white area beacons for this playthrough. Probably. Oh, it's not just uh, white area beacons, though. It's also um, higher tier modules. So that's going to have a lot of throughput. Where are we? Foenestra. We need to... Excuse me. We need to go to Spiriso. There's our science. And we now have advanced roboports, including small roboports. Not sure if I'll end up using those or not. We need AI cores for these. I'm not going to bother. At least not for a while. This hasn't moved in forever. Although I think it probably traces back to Holmium. Yeah, it does. So we might get some AI cores in a minute. No, at the Energy Science 123 Maker Loader. Energy Science 123... Do you mean this? Oh, and... Uh... There it is, in motion. Cool, cool, cool. I still have yet to upgrade to the newer machines, even though I've built some. There's no, there's no real need just yet, but it would look cool. How many do we have? I need f 16, right? To upgrade these for each of the regular exotics. 
Uh, advanced research server. We've got 20. Cool. Maybe I'll do that next time. In fact, I'm sure I will. Uh, what else was I doing just now? Getting the scaffolding placed before we upgrade to the new model of these. That'll be a good reminder that I wanted to upgrade this. Um, here it is. Scaffolding train. Off you go. Actually, what I should do is five seconds of inactivity and 30 seconds past. They're actually default as well. That works very well. So that covers the initial delay where the bots sometimes don't jump out. Especially when it comes to large numbers of tile ghosts. What the... Wasn't expecting that. We are three minutes and twenty seconds away from Spiriso. And there's our plating. And I've actually only got two blocks like this so far for the whole playthrough. Um, so it won't be that onerous to update it. Especially since I switched off the vanilla trains dropping off here. Once I'm done flying around, I'll go over there personally and put down a bunch of chests and shove everything into them. So that we can get this done. Should we do a little rocket launch as a treat before we go? Let's do it. Can't you just pick a dollies the bulk loaders around? No, you can't. Although you can, surprisingly enough, pick a dollies stations, or at least vanilla stations, back and forth. Um, across rail, but not like away from the rail. Soon. Let's find someone to raid. We got a speed run. What is Universal Trains? Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> are, are we talking about trains that have a cargo wagon, a separate cargo wa wagon for literally every resource? Oh no. What else is going on here? What is COE3? Oh, 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 it's happening. It's happening. Maybe I should lower the volume for this. There we go. Cities of Earth. Oh, right. I remember. And... I 
may have overcompensated for the volume there because I didn't hear it lower myself. Fantastic. Beautiful. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you're into that. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And until next time, stay safe. Tomorrow we'll be playing around a bit with some MechWarrior 5. Uh, next after that, two days later, we're doing Kerbal Space Program with Kerbal Operating System again. And the ever-challenging Ferrum Aerospace, especially with basic parts. Good grief. After that, it's oxygen not included, and then back to three days of SEK2 goodness. Take care, Evil Plum, Veldak, Master Chef, thank you for the follow. And everyone else as well, thanks for hanging out. See you, Morpheus. Arif Holloway, take care. See you later, Kuchen, Eagle Wolf. That's how I will do um that's one too close.